49er Clubhouse, brought to you by Air California with flights from San Jose, Oakland, and San Francisco to the best of Southern California, and by the company that says never borrow money needlessly, Household Finance. Hello, everyone. This is Jim Lang, and today it's either the beginning or the end for the San Francisco 49ers. They're hosting the always tough Detroit Lions in the regular season finale. The Lions, of course, have nothing to gain from the game except pride. The 49ers have everything to gain. If they win, they'll again be the Western Division champs who move into the playoffs for the second consecutive year. Of course, the 49ers could get more help from another club should Pittsburgh defeat the L.A. Rams. Then the 49ers would be champs no matter what happens against the Lions. The Rams are playing Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, and that game should be just about over. And Lon Simmons will have the results shortly. The Lions are a banged-up group heading into today's game. Dick LeBeau, their fine cornerbacker, uh, is done for the season after undergoing knee surgery. Mike Lucci, the last leader on defense, is hurting with a bad thigh muscle. And Charlie Sanders, one of the best tight ends in pro ball, is badly hobbled because of a bad arch. It won't be known if either or any of them will play until right after kickoff. With or without Lucci or Sanders, the Lions still have a potent team, a team that's been strongest this year on offense. They have Greg Landry at quarterback, and he's the best runner of all the pro signal callers. And the Lions have used the option play many times this season just because of Landry's ability to run. Detroit also has Steve Owens to get that tough in-close yardage. Owens is just 24 yards short of the 1,000 mark. If he gets that yardage, he'll be the first Lion back territory in one season. Owens teams with Alfie Taylor in the backfield, and Earl McCulloch and Larry Walton give the Lions good wide receivers. Detroit was planning on a similar pattern this year as last when the club won its final five games and made the playoffs. Unfortunately for the Lions, Minnesota clobbered them last week to ruin the hopes for Joe Schmidt and his players. Meanwhile, the 49ers' destiny is squarely on their own shoulders. If they beat the Lions, they'll be in the playoffs, and deservedly so. If they lose, depending on the results of the Pittsburgh Ram game, their chances probably will be gone. We'll return to our 49er clubhouse in just one minute. This is a commercial for Air California, the airline that gives you a choice between San Diego and the Bay Area. Air California is the only airline that provides non-stop service between San Diego and San Jose. We call it Hour Power. It saves you 30 minutes over any competing service. So if time is an important factor, you should be flying Air California. Air California also means dependability with an on-time record that's the highest in the industry. Pretty informal on Air California. Each stewardess serves you in her own way. My name is Paige Hargrove, and I'm an Air California stewardess. I'd like to suggest you do something for me. Switch to Air California on your next flight between San Diego and the San Jose Oakland area. Last Sunday, the 49ers played what may have been their best game of the season. They were near perfection as they humbled the Atlanta Falcons 24-3. The 49er offense showed imagination and variety as it overwhelmed the Falcons. Here's one of the plays that helped wipe out Atlanta. Quarterback John Brody doing it all on this one. Brody fakes. Bootleg. Touchdown 49ers. Brody fakes to Willard and Washington. Bootleg to the right and went in for the score. Brody says the 49ers figured the play would work after watching films of Atlanta's game with Oakland. Well, we'd seen Oakland uh, run a play very similar to it, only uh, they handed the ball to the halfback uh, the week previous, and uh, they'd run it two or three times, and both Humphrey and, and the outside linebacker had taken off with the play, and uh, I think used in the proper situation, or the same situation that Oakland used it, uh, it looked like you could walk it in, and uh, obviously that's the only way I could get it in, and that's the way it works. The 49er quarterback kind of summed up the feeling of the entire team as he talked about today's game. I think we feel the same way as we felt uh, about 10 days ago, is that uh, if, we, can, if we, we win our last two, we're in good shape. And uh, it's turned out to where uh, we still have to beat Detroit. And uh, I think most of us uh, had solid thoughts in that direction, and now it's come to pass. So uh, it's just uh, a real tough ball game against a real outstanding squad. What about Washington's win over L.A.? Has that helped up the 49ers' emotional level for today's game? We're still in the same position. We have to beat them, you know, for any chance. And uh, so I really...
really don't think you can talk about uh, emotional lifts or anything of that sort. I'm sure we're all uh, happier that it's turned out the way it did. And the 49er quarterback talked about the Lions' defense and how it might compare to Atlanta's, especially against the pass. They've played quite a bit of zone this year, but as you know, Jim David basically uh, has been a man-to-man -man, uh, coverage defensive coach, and, uh, and Detroit's been very successful uh, that way. In the past, they have gone to a little more zone, I think, and uh, I understand Dick LeBeau's out, so possibly they'll play a little more zone, but uh, we really don't know what they're doing. We have to be prepared for whatever they do. Back, Larry Shriver was a one-man attack against Atlanta last Sunday as he was spectacular with a screen pass and just as outstanding when plowing up the middle. And we'll hear some of Shriver's exploits when we return to our 49er clubhouse in just one minute. When you come down to it, there's a reason for everything. Your reason to borrow, for example, may be to fix the car, replace appliances, whatever. There's a reason for borrowing from household finance, too. In fact, several reasons, good ones. HFC is the oldest lending company. That means experience. Two and a half million families borrow from household every year. That means satisfaction. Household office computer quick account handling. That means service. When you need to borrow, there's reason enough to apply at household. A good reason for borrowing is a good reason for lending. And a good place to borrow is Remember, there are 46 HFC offices in the Bay Area. Consult your telephone directory for the one that's nearest you. Larry Shriver is in his first full year with the 49ers. He didn't play much last season. But last Sunday, he got his first six-pointer on this play. Listen, Brody is back to pass an end around, a fake end around, a screen pass set up to Shriver. He's at 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown 49ers. for Atlanta. He was one caught in that screen pass blocking as Brody faked an end around and then turned and threw the screen to the far side to Shriver. Three blockers in front of him and Shriver ran it in for the score. Shriver talks about it from the running back's view. Well, when I was sent into the game, I wasn't sent in with the play. Uh, we've been running the verse all day long and uh, the play is... Uh, fake screen, it was a screen off the fake reverse, and uh, when the play was called, the linebacker, he blitzed in from the right side, and on, in that area where he left is where I was supposed to come out, when I came out, it was wide open, and when John threw the ball, it was up in the sun, and I didn't think it was going to come Final down. Final score from Pittsburgh, the Rams have defeated the Steelers 23-14, to 14. it means that the 49ers have to beat Detroit today to win the Western Division Championship. So it is 23 to 14. The Rams beat the Steelers to put the pressure on the 49ers. And John Brody talks about the screen from the quarterback's end of it. It's a play that we've had, but we really haven't had a chance to use it. We've run two or three uh, uh, extra verses uh, when we got a turnover in the previous couple of games, and I'm sure that uh, they look at those games pretty closely. And so from the same... <laughs> From that same situation, we just called a screen off an extra round, and uh, Schreiber made a great play and uh, got it in the end zone. How did Schreiber feel about getting his first pro touchdown? Oh, I was really excited. In fact, I had a plan to how to put the ball in the end zone. I was just going to set it down in the end zone. Like everybody else spikes it. When I got in there, I forgot all about it. And uh, I had a plan all year. When I made my first touchdown, I was just going to set it down instead of spiking it. Later in the game, Schreiber ran the ways run all year for the 49ers, hard charging and straight ahead. Give to Schreiber again. Big hole. He goes to the 40, bounces to the 45. Oh, is he running hard? Schreiber picks up the first down at the 45. He got through that hole in a hurry and then just ran over people. Larry explained that play very simply. Well, on a play where I gained 12 yards, it was the exact same play on the, from the previous play. And I imagine since the play worked so good the first time, John came right back with you. We went on a fast count on set, and it kind of caught him off guard. They were shifting from a 4-3 into a stacked defense, and they were just leaving a natural hole right there on the left side of the line. When we went on a quick count, we caught him shifting over, and it just made a natural hole there, and it just went right through it. 
Schreiber has entered most of this year's games as a replacement for Ken Willard. What's he thinking about when he goes into a game? There really isn't a strategy. I try to, I think a lot about not from the ball and making mistakes and blocking, not so much as running, but my blocking and my assignments and uh, the fewer mistakes you make, uh, the more confidence a coach will get in, in you, you know. And so, uh, well, I guess there's really no strategy. Just don't make any mistakes and do your best you can with being cold when you go in there. The specialty teams had their moments last Sunday, and here's one on a kickoff. Gossett's kick is going to be rather short to Belton at the 7-yard line, up to the 10, the 15, the 20, 25, 30-yard line. Fumbles. The 49ers have it. It is Collin who recovered the fumble at the 32-yard line. Elmer Collin getting the fumble. And another Atlanta Falcons shaken up. Elmer Collin talks about the recovery. The uh, Ed Beard and I were running down, and uh, we had a gizzard, which is a cross, and I uh, I crossed first and ran down, and uh, it messed up the uh, the Atlanta blockers for a second, and then the guy came and uh, knocked me flat on my back, the best I've, I've been hit all year, I think, and uh, it was like uh, falling in a in a sewer and coming up with a rose. I I got up, I wanted to hit the, the guy that knocked me down, but then I saw the ball and I jumped on the ball. And uh, I think uh, Jim Snydecki and uh, Bob Hoskins and uh, even Johnny Fuller were the ones responsible for the uh, for knocking the ball out of the hands of the carrier. We'll return to our 49er clubhouse in just one minute. Each winter, many Bay Area sun worshippers fly to Palm Springs for a fun-filled vacation of golf, swimming, horseback riding, tennis, and nightlife. And more of them are flying on Air California's Boeing 737 Sunjets. The reason? Air California is the only airline providing flights to Palm Springs from all three airports, San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose. And you save $2 each way over any competitive service. Two positive benefits for flying Air California to Palm Springs. More service and a real savings in dollars. But there are others. Air California has the best on-time record in the industry, and the service is friendly and efficient. And by the way, if you're traveling to Orange County Disneyland, Ontario, or San Diego, Air California flies there too. Air California, an aggressive airline, dedicated to good service at a reasonable price. Call Air California or your travel agent. Back in 1957, the Detroit Lions beat the 49ers in a divisional playoff game 21 or 31 to 27. Well, John Brody, for one, hasn't forgotten that disappointment. You can bet that Brody will be doing his best to keep the Lions from ruining another 49ers season. Incidentally, if San Francisco does win today, it'll host the divisional playoff game on next Sunday, December 26th, right here at Candlestick Park. The opponent will come from the Eastern Division. All our guests interviewed receive blue chip stamps. Keep in shape with blue chip stamps. The bowling ball is nine and two six books. The volleyball set is two and two six books. When it comes to saving, blue chip stamps are a great participation sport. You'll find them at all purity stores. This is Jim Lang, and that's our 49er Clubhouse for today. The 49er Clubhouse is brought to you by Air California, with group fares and charter service to major games around the state, and by Household Finance, a good place to borrow. This is KSFO 560 San Francisco. Action-packed football pictures by prize-winning cameraman Matt Southard, regularly on the sports pages of the San Francisco Examiner. It's the Examiner for exciting coverage of the entire world of sports. Don't get caught with your batteries now. Say, can you imagine turning on your transistor radio to the biggest ball game of the year, and it won't make a sound? Don't let it happen to you. You better get everybody out tonight. Energizer. Pick up the last. Pick up the last. For batteries that last and last and last in radios, cameras, or cassette players, get everybody out the line energizer. They last so long, work so well, they're America's best selling out the line batteries. First, because they last. Don't get caught with your batteries down. You better get the baby out of life. Energizer. Ever ready. Alkaline Energizers.
from Candlestick Park for your enjoyment, 49er football is on the air. This is Lon Simmons with Hugh McElhinney welcoming you to another exciting professional football game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions. Brought to you by Metropolitan Life, providing a new service, a confidential analysis for you and your family. And by Roos Atkins. Be on the best dress list this season in handsome clothes from Roos Atkins. Also by the more than 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers across the country, serving you Chevron gasolines with F310, the Action Age gasoline. And by Chevrolet, a better way to see the USA. The Los Angeles Rams have seen to it today that the 49ers have to win here. They cannot back in to the Western Division Championship. It's the same as it was last year when the 49ers had to beat the Raiders to take the championship after the Rams had dumped the New York Giants. Now, San Francisco will have to beat the Lions today if they are to defend their Western Division Championship. A tie will not be good enough, and uh, a loss certainly won't be. They have to win. So the pressure has been applied now by the Rams. Of course, if you were going to be in any position at all, you would accept the 49er position because just uh, a week ago, Monday, last Monday night, the 49ers were in a spot where they couldn't possibly win if the Rams had won both of their games. Well, the Rams lost to the Redskins, and that sets it up where the 49ers can win the championship by defeating the Lions today. The uh, Rams winning 23 to 14 over the Steelers. In just a few moments, Hugh McElhinney and I will be bringing you the play-by-play -play action of today's National Football League game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions. Before we bring you the starting lineup and some of the pregame color, let's take time out for just a moment. Consider this. You may think you have more than enough life insurance to provide your family with a continuing income, but you may actually be underinsured. Many factors, like inflation, can change your insurance requirements. Metropolitan Life has a unique life insurance service, a simple way to decide whether you need additional insurance. They make a confidential analysis of all your current assets. They explain your Social Security benefits and coordinate your present insurance with Social Security so that you will receive the maximum benefit from each. Then they graphically summarize the best possible disposition of all your assets to provide total security for your family now and in the future. The analysis for you and your family is worthwhile. It's confidential and it's free. You're under no obligation. For more information, call any of the 30 metropolitan offices in Northern California and Nevada. Metropolitan Life. Insurance for the good life throughout the beautiful West. This broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the San Francisco 49ers of the National Football League solely for the entertainment of our listeners. Any rebroadcast, publication, or any other use of this description without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers is prohibited. And if you insist on using it, we'll send you to Seattle with Hugh McElhinney. Hugh, it's going to be touchdown Seattle in a year or so. Huh? Well, it looks that way right now. Uh, I'm going to be moving up the uh, lawn to Seattle the 1st of March and uh, hope to spearhead uh, what I feel is a very, very fine group and possibly get in a franchise uh, when one comes uh, available. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity for me. I understand that you will uh, be an executive vice president and general manager. Will you be speaking to any of the bums in the booth anymore? I'll be speaking to everybody. And uh, it's, it's, well, as I said, it's a great opportunity. And uh, if we are the fortunate ones to be able to get the, uh, the franchise, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'll be calling down and asking for your advice and formations and who's carrying the ball. <laughs> I'll give you some advice, all right, Hugh. It might not be on formation. <laughs> Hugh? <laughs> Today, uh, of course, we're right back where we were last year, playing the Raiders. The 49ers are down to the last game. They have to win it. No question about that. But, of course, the 49ers over the years, I think when we check the records, they've shown even when they've had a poor season, they've always come up in the last ball game to look good. And uh, that's through the 50s and even the 49ers. It seemed like we'd play a good ball game to salvage the uh, bad season that they would have. They'd come up with a big game at the end of the season. But of course the Detroit Lions, they've been the destroyers for the San Francisco 49ers. In 1953, we lost three ball games. Two of them were, were to the Detroit Lions, and I think we lost three ball games by a total of eight points. 
And that was the year that uh, Y.A. Tittle uh, broke his cheekbone back in Detroit when uh, David uh, caught him with the knee in the end zone. But they have been a destroyer, but we would have won. he hit him in the cheek. Yeah, got him in the cheek, right, with the knee. And, of course, in 1957, everybody remembers that particular playoff game uh, where we had him right out in front, 27 to 7, uh, going into the, uh, right in the beginning of the third quarter, and we end up losing the ball game 31 to 7. But today, as you said, the 49ers have to win it. The Rams have done their part, uh, and now it's up to the 49ers. And I'm glad that they have to do it because uh, I hate to see the 49ers go in the back do door. Ed Beard has been elected by the ball club, by his teammates, the Lenny Eshmon Award for the most inspirational player of the San Francisco 49ers. And Ed Beard, of course, is the captain of what we used to call in the old days the Saki squad, but now they put the better ball players in there because it's such a vital part of the football game. And, of course, the San Francisco 49ers, the management of the gift will be a $1,000 watch to Ed Beard, and it's the highest award that a team can give to a teammate. It's uh, in our congratulations to Ed Beard. Quite an ovation here for the introduction of the 49er offense, Hugh. It really is. The fans are really charged up, and of course this time last year we had uh, Dick Berg had the, what they call the 49er fever going. Well, this year it's been a little bit spotty, never quite sure just uh, how the 49ers were going to come out, and this year we certainly expect them to go all the way into the Super Bowl. They do have their opportunity, but we got to get over this one first, and then of course we get over this one, we got to take them one by one. The clock on the scoreboard shows we'll have the opening kickoff in just a few seconds. Happy holidays from Metropolitan Life. That's our head office choir in the background. In the spirit of the season, we'd like to take a moment to express our good wishes. Our congratulations to Dick Nolan and all the 49er players and staff on the way they put it all together in 1971. It's been another great and exciting year for the team, and all of us at Metropolitan are pleased and proud of our sponsorship of the game broadcast on the Golden West Radio Network. Our thanks to Lon Simmons for being our voice during the broadcast, and our thanks to you for listening. We hope that our messages encouraged you to make sure your financial protection arrangements are up to date. On behalf of the more than 2,400 Metropolitan Life folks serving you in Northern California and Nevada, a very happy holiday season. May 1972 bring you an abundance of good health and good fortune. The Wayne Tarr across the way in his Santa Claus uniform. Ho, ho, ho today, Wayne. The 49ers have won the uh, toss, selected to receive the kickoff. Yeah. That's right. They'll be defending uh, from the west. And uh, one other thing, today's a big day uh, for the 49ers, and of course uh, this is Old Timers Day, and we have all the ball players and their wives as guests of the San Francisco 49ers here, and of course at halftime they'll be all on the field and they will be introduced. But I think old Scoopy Smith got me involved in something, so I'll probably be leaving a little bit early and getting back a little bit late, but he's got me in a pass, punt, and kick contest on the field that, uh, my goodness, I never could pass, I never could kick, and uh, to try and compete with some of the fine guys that uh, I've played ball with Maybe over the years. Maybe you'll stack up enough points running. <laughs> going to, uh, just waiting for the uh, Marine color guard to escort Joyce Hayson, one of the 49er Nuggets, through the microphone to sing the national anthem today. And uh, talking to Tennessee Ernie Ford Friday, and he, uh, he has sung the national anthem out here at the 49er game, and he said that, well, you have to win because I've already signed up to sing the national anthem on the 26th. So let's hope that Ernie Ford gets a chance to sing it out here. Now here's Joyce Hayson with the national anthem.
wonderful job by Joyce Hayson, one of the 49er Nuggets, singing the national anthem. The 49ers will receive the kickoff to our right. The south end of the stadium to the north, the Detroit Lions will be kicking off. Errol Mann will be doing the kicking for the Lions. And the uh, 49ers will send back Vic Washington and Doug Cunningham as the deep men. And this is going to be quite an afternoon. The fans ready to react to anything positive. The 49ers hopeful that they can give them uh, plenty of positive things to react to. Man will kick the ball off from the hash mark from the near side. Doesn't kick it from uh, in the middle of the field. He brings it to uh, this side. 49ers are going to have to... 49ers haven't moved their backs. Why, I don't know, but... They haven't moved them over towards this side. Let's see if a uh, man is going to try to kick it diagonally across the field. His kick heads towards uh, Vic Washington at the 9, up to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, to the 30-yard line, and dragged a couple of men across the 30, and uh, Charlie Weaver made the tackle, and a lion is shaken up. Rob goes shaken up and having to be helped off the field. The uh, Lions now will have a defensive Larry Hand at right end, Mitchell, Jim Mitchell at left end, Bob Bell at left tackle. And the uh, right tackle is Jerry Rush. 49ers, Lucci, Walker, and Namup are the linebackers for the Lions. Of the 49ers, I formation, Willard and Vic Washington behind Brody. On first down, they give to Vic Washington. Little hole, skids across to the 34. A penalty marker is dropped. Willard gave him a block on uh, Nama, the outside linebacker, but there was a penalty on the play. And let's see if it's uh, offside against the Lions is what it is. The ball is at the 30-yard line. It will be a five-yard march off to the 35. It will be first and five. First and five. The cornerback for the Lions, Lem Barney, the left cornerback, Al Walker, the right corner, Mike Wigger and Wayne Rasmussen are the safety. Clark. Now the 49ers have Gene Washington slotted inside Dick Witcher to the right. Get to Vic Washington on a sweep. Needs a block. Gets to the 35, to the 36, and that's all. They really closed that one up as Wayne Walker and Mike Lucci came over to make the tackle. It is a gain of uh, maybe a yard to the 36, it will be second down, and a little over four yards to go. The officials, Fred Swearingen, is the referee of the umpires, Tony Sacco, the head linesman, Jerry Bergman, the line judge, Bill Summers, the back judge, Gordon McCarter, and the field judge is Frank Kirkland. Second down and about four yards to go for San Francisco. Same offensive formation. The 49ers go from our right to our left as Brody fakes back to pass, throws a screen out to Witcher, gets by the first man, is cut down, a penalty flag is dropped at the 35. There may be a clipping penalty against San Francisco. They tried to set up the screen to Witcher. It was pretty well defensed by the Lions. And then a penalty flag dropped, and the 49ers are walking backwards, so it must have been a clip off of that screen. Let's see what the have to wait and see. No, it's an illegal, ineligible receiver downfield down setting up that screen. They got the, the blockers across the line of scrimmage, or at least one of them. So this will cost the 49ers. And it will be a major penalty, of course, a 15-yarder. Moves the ball back to the 21-yard line. Well, San Francisco is faced with big yardage now. Second and 19. It is second down from the 21. They have to go to uh, just across the 40 for a first down. Witcher wide to the far side with Barney to cover him. Walker, or Clark rather, covering uh, Gene Washington. Brody looking for Washington. He's throwing long now for Witcher. He's out in front and Barney intercepts the ball. Cuts back to the 40, the 45, the 50, to the 40 hit by Blue and then knocked down by Gene Washington at the 41 of the 49ers. Brody throwing long and Witcher was just a little bit ahead of Barney, but Barney 
took the ball away from him and runs back to the San Francisco 41, where it'll be first and 10, and the Lions go on the offense. Greg Landry at quarterback. He has Algie Taylor as the lone back behind him. Steve Owens flanked to the left. Tight end is Sanders, McCulloch, and Walton to the near side. Landry gives to Taylor. Big opening. Penalty flag. He's across the 30 to the 29. A penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. And let's see against... No, it's against the 49ers, I believe. So the Lions will take the advance of the ball to the 29 where it'll be a first down. <laughs> Offside against San Francisco is refused by the Lions as they picked up first down yardage. The 49ers have Hardman, Edwards, Kruger, and Hart across the line. Wilcox, Nunley, and Vanderbunner, the linebacker. Jim Johnson and Bruce Taylor are the cornermen. Phillips and Roosevelt Taylor are the safeties. Owens and Taylor behind Landry. The 49ers are off sides again as Taylor is caught from behind at the 30-yard line, dropped at the line of scrimmage, but Wilcox was offside. So that will cost San Francisco a five-yard penalty. It will be first and five. In a game such as this, you can't afford the mistakes. The 49ers have made three mistakes, four mistakes already, and uh, we have 12.54 remaining in the first quarter. 49ers have had problems in getting penalties. I think they're leading the league. They have 889 yards going into this ball game on penalties, and they've come at very crucial times for the ball club. High formation, Owens and Taylor behind Landry on first and five, with Walton flanked to the near side. McCulloch split left. Landry gives to Owens, but for about three yards to the 22. He needs just 24 yards to reach 1,000. And he picks up three of them there. It will be second down and two yards to go. 49ers uh, giving the ball up on a pass interception. Have been penalized three times. And now the Lions are in good position at the 49ers 22. Walton and McCulloch come out to the near side. McCulloch set inside Walton. Owens and Taylor, the backs behind Landry, on second and two. Landry, the big quarterback who can run and throw, he is tough. He gives to Owens. Owens breaks across the 20 to the 19, has the first down. Tackled as he crossed the 20 by the middle linebacker, Frank Nunley. But Detroit has a first and 10 at San Francisco's 19. It appears in the running game so far, uh, they're running to the left side, and they've been most successful, the one that Allie Taylor almost broke, and they're taking advantage of Cedric Harden, because Cedric Harden has the good, fast outside move, and they're just riding Cedric out, and uh, just straight on blocking the tackle, just riding Cedric Harden out. Taylor, the lone back behind uh, Landry, with McCulloch slotted inside, and he draw to Taylor, stumbles, and then a hit as he gets about a yard, Earl Edwards moved across to uh, belt him, and he got a yard or so to the 18. Second and nine. One back behind a Landry that time was Aldi Taylor and gave it to him on a delay. He got the yard at second down and nine. 49ers trying to get tough defensively with the Lions at the 18. The Rams have already defeated the Steelers. The 49ers have to win today if they are the Western Division champion. Back to pass goes Landry. His first pass. He has time. He lays it off to Taylor. Makes a leaping catch. He's surrounded, gets away from a man, gets away from another, is formed under at the 24-yard line. Jim Johnson, Wilcox, pinned him in, and then finally Tommy Hart and Frank Nunley belted him. Taylor made a great effort to catch that ball, a one-handed catch. He batted the ball up in the air and caught it. He'd have been better off had he not caught it. Because it's a loss back to the 24. It is third down now. And about... 15 yards to go. For the new confidential analysis for you and your family, contact your local Metropolitan representative. Third and 15, the Lions at the 49ers, 24. Now, Walton and McCulloch go wide to the left. McCulloch slotted inside Walton. Steve Owens is flanked to the right outside the tight end, Sanders. Taylor, the lone back behind Landry. Landry straight back to pass. He has time. He looks, trying to set up the screen. He throws incomplete over the head of Taylor. Had the screen set up. But he threw it a little bit too high. 
and it will be fourth down, and Mann will come in to try for a field goal. This one will be an angle from the near side. It will be a 31-yard attempt. Rasmussen to hold. Waiting for the pass from center. Place down. Kick. And it is long enough and good. Look at the scoreboard with 9.56 remaining in the first quarter. The uh, Lions 3, the 49ers nothing. The cost of living has never been known to go any place but up, so it's important to have your life insurance program reviewed periodically to see if you're providing enough future security for your family. Metropolitan Life has a simple way to do this. They'll make a confidential analysis of all your current assets for you and your family. This checkup deals in specific amounts. They explain your Social Security benefits and coordinate your present insurance with Social Security so that you will receive the maximum benefit from each. Then, they graphically summarize the best possible disposition of your assets to provide total security for your family according to your plans and objectives. Make sure your family remains secure. Call any of the 30 metropolitan offices in Northern California and Nevada. Ask about the confidential analysis for you and your family. It's free. You're under no obligation. Metropolitan Life. Insurance for the good life throughout the beautiful West. The Lions leading three to nothing as man will kick off. Cunningham and Washington waiting. Hopefully the 49ers have used up the mistakes in that first few minutes. The high short kick to Cunningham at the 10. He's to the 15, to the 20, the 25, dives to the 30-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for San Francisco, the ball at its own 30. The Lions taking advantage of a pass interception and a fine run back by Lem Barney to get three points. New England leading Baltimore 21 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Miami has defeated Green Bay 27 to 6. If Baltimore loses, Miami would be champions of the Eastern Division of the NFC. They move to the 34-yard line as Willard carried for about four yards. It'll be second down and six. The uh, Eastern Division of the American Conference is what I was trying to say that Baltimore and Miami are battling for. And Baltimore is right now looking down the gun barrel as Miami has already won and New England is leading 21 to 10 over the Colts. Second down and six for the 49ers. Witcher to the near side. Gene Washington to the far side. A give to Vic Washington on a sweep. Cuts in. Goes to the 40-yard line. Close to the 40. He's going to be short of the first down. Wayne Walker made the tackle on him. It will be a third down, I believe, uh, inches to go because the chain is just across the 40-yard mark and the football, the nose of the football, just touching the 40. So it will be third and the width of the yardage mark. Gene Washington comes out, Windsor and Pollock in there as tight end to add blocking for San Francisco with third down in a matter of inches. If Brody is willing to go for the first down or look for the bomb. The defense dropping back, thinking that maybe he might go for the bomb. He gives to Willard. Willard has the first down. Willard just got enough for the first down as he went over the top at the 40. That'll be first and 10 for San Francisco. The 49ers get their first first down. Detroit defense backing up now as Brody goes back to pass, looks, looks, throws for Qualick. He's got it at the 40 to the 36-yard line of the line. Knocked out of bounds by Clark at the 36 of the line. Brody lofting that one over the head of the linebacker that time to Qualick. And he carries it to the 36 for all first and 10. I look for John Brody to work on the right side of the... Detroit Lions in the passing game. They have a young fellow, he's a rookie, Al Clark, playing that position. But the big 
opposition for John is Wayne Walker, who plays that right cornerback spot. First down and 10 from the Lions, 36, the 49ers. Trailing three to nothing in the first quarter. Brody gives the big Washington on a sweep. Cuts back in, and he cuts right into Mike Lucci. Big Washington. He got a yard or so to maybe the 34. He got the 34. It'll be two. Walker and Lucci make the tackle. About a yard and a half. Is Washington cut back. There was nobody blocking the middle linebacker, Lucci, and he sat right there and waited for it. About a yard and a half gain. Second down. Slightly more than eight to go. Gene Washington comes to the left. Dick Witcher goes to the right. Barney to cover Witcher. Clark to cover Washington. A big rush put on Brody. Throws for Witcher and overthrows him. They had the rush on, on Brody and John overthrew. Good coverage by Barney. He was with Witcher. Had Brody gotten the ball lower, Witcher was inside Barney. Could have made the catch, but the throw was up high over their heads. And it will be a third down situation now as the uh, Lions send in a couple of deep defenders replacing Namath and Walker to send in Tommy Vaughn and Bobby Williams. Detroit Lions have what we call the blitz on. All three linebackers are coming, so therefore it made it a perfect shot for John Brody because he was catching the Detroit Lions in a man-for-man -man situation. Actually, Witcher was open. He was in position to be able to come up with the ball if the ball would have been underthrown, but there's one time that Brody overthrew uh, Dick Witcher. Third down, about eight and a half. A couple of extra backs in there. As Brody goes back, fakes a draw, looking, throws for Witcher, and he makes the catch at the 15, and he's down to the 13. Witcher went up in the air, the ball hit him in the chest, as Brody threw it perfectly for him. There were two men on him, the ball popped up in the air, but Witcher was able to hold it and move to the 13. This is the same pattern uh, which John was trying to hit Witcher before when they when the Lions had the blitz on and uh, he was right on target hit him right in the chest but uh, Witcher couldn't hold it immediately it bounced up and he came down with the ball actually it was good defense by Detroit but Brody put the ball right in the hole first and 10 from the 13 Washington to the left Witcher to the right to give to Vic Washington he tries to get someplace but the only place he gets there are a bunch of white shirts there and Larry Hand was the first one to hit him Lucci and Mitchell helping out a gain of a yard maybe to the 12 that's where it is it's second down and nine 49 ers trail three to nothing with five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter Forty ers offensive line blue is its center people and Beisler the guard Rody and Banizak the tackles Qualic the tight end Gene Washington split left with Clark playing right up tight on him. Witcher to the right and Barney playing rather loosely on him. Brody back to pass. Looks, looks, throws for Witcher. He's open. He got a touchdown, 49ers. Brody threw the ball just as Witcher made his break. He got behind Barney and Wager in the corner and made the catch for the touchdown. to try for the extra point. Brody to hold. Place down. It's good. Look at the scoreboard with 4.56 remaining in the first quarter. The 49ers 7 and the Lions 3. On behalf of the folks at Metropolitan Life, our head office choir brings you a greeting in song. To make the holidays brighter for others, the group will be performing in San Francisco tomorrow at Letterman Hospital, the Laguna Honda Home for the Aged, and the Youth Guidance Center. From us to you, happy holidays. If you're in downtown San Francisco tomorrow, you can hear the Metropolitan Life Choir singing at the Bank of America Plaza a little after 11, Union Square at noon, and the Civic Plaza about 12.20 and a series of many concerts. The choir is a 25-year tradition of Metropolitans and is composed of 35 employees from the company's head office in San Francisco. Bobby Williams. 
and Ron Jesse are the deep men waiting for Gossett's kick. Forty-nineers leading seven to three. And Gossett kicks it high to Williams at one yard deep. Coming out to the five, to the ten, to the fifteen. Hit at the eighteen yard line. It was hit. Hoskins and Schreiber, and it was Schreiber, I think, who hit him first. The ball at the 18-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Lions. 4.40 remaining in the first quarter. San Francisco leads 7-3. to three. The Lions send McCulloch and Walton out to the near side again, and Owens flanks to the far side outside the tight end, Sanders. Aldi Taylor, the lone back behind Landry on first down. Taylor moves over a couple of steps now. Landry's back to pass. He looks. He throws over the middle. It is complete to Walton. Walton is tackled by Jim Johnson at the 31-yard line, or maybe the 32. Has the first down. Walton was open. And Landry hit him with that pass for the first down, just across the 31. In this formation, they only have one back in the backfield, and they put two receivers spread out to the right. And then on the shift, the fullback moved over to the right halfback position. So therefore, what we had called normally trips right. But what it does, it forces the red, the San Francisco 49ers into a man-for-man -man situation because there's three men onto the right side that can catch Quick the ball. Quick count, a pitch to Aldi Taylor coming to the outside. Cuts back 31, hit by Nunley, slowed down, and then grabbed by Edwards and wrestled backwards as he gets to maybe the 32, possibly only the 31. Put it at the 32, call it no gain, second down, and 10. Nunley was the man who slowed him down. Ron Jesse coming into the lineup for the Lions. Jesse has replaced Walton, and Jesse has slotted inside McCulloch to the near side with second down and uh, about nine and a half. I formation, Owens and Taylor behind Landry. Landry may be changing the call as Taylor moves out of the I formation. Now a couple steps to the right. Landry straight back to pass. He has time. He throws long. Out in front of Jesse. He is tackled by Phillips who made a touchdown saving tackle at the 17-yard line. But Jesse beat Phillips and Landry hit him with the pass. Phillips made a diving tackle at the 17 of the 49ers. This is what I normally look for for Sanders, because he's the normally the tight end for the uh, for the Detroit Lions, to work on Mel Phillips, because he has been hampered all year with a bad ankle. And it was certainly evident there that the ankle is still bothering, because as he took the first fake, the receiver coming at him, he could not recover fast enough, and as he got his speed going, he just didn't have it. The ankle is still bothering him a great deal. Now McCulloch slots inside Walton as Walton replaces Jesse, first and ten from the 17 as the Lions strike with two... Uh, Successive pass the pitch out too far to the outside is caught by Edwards and goes to about the 11 yard line. Mel Farr coming in there for the first time and carries to the 11 as Edwards caught him from behind. It's a gain of six yards. It'll be second down and four. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. This is Gene Nelson and some of the most romantic moments of my life were spent in football huddles. I'll tell you all about it weeknights, eight to midnight on KSFO in San Francisco. New England has defeated Baltimore, so Miami wins the Eastern Division of the American Conference. But Baltimore will be in the playoff. I formation, Walton to the near side. The give is to Owens. Busts his way down to the six-yard line. And uh, that will be good enough for a first down for Detroit at the San Francisco Six. For insurance protection for your family or your business, contact your local Metropolitan Life representative. Put the ball at the five-yard line. It is now... A first and goal for the Lions from the five. So the 49ers drove to a touchdown. And now the Lions are right back. And hitting on two successive passes, one the long bomb by Landry. They are first and goal at San Francisco's five with Owens and Farr, the running backs behind Landry. Sanders is split off, and Walton flanked outside him. Landry back to pass, throws for the end zone. It is batted down by Phillips. Intended for the tight end, Sanders, and Phillips made a... Leap to bat it down. Sanders. 
Second down, 34 seconds remaining to play in the first quarter. Can, uh, seven to three, the 49ers lead. As the Lions have it, second down and goal. McCulloch goes wide to the left. Sanders splits out to the right, and Walton flanks outside him with Jim Johnson covering him. Bruce Taylor on McCulloch to the left. Owens and Taylor. They give it to Owens to the outside, and he's grabbed and knocked down on a good play by Cedric Hardman. Hardman got him by the ankles as he tried to go to the outside. Roosevelt Taylor came up, but it was Hardman who did the job, and they almost had the 49ers pinched in this year. That play was designed to go off tackle on the inside of Cedric Hardman, but uh, uh, Vanderbunt filled in so beautifully, forced the uh, runner Owens to go to the outside and real great job by Cedric Hartman recovering from the block and go moving to the outside to make the tackle block moving they might not get a play underway before the quarter end they do not the gun sound the look of the scoreboard shows the 49ers 7 and the Lions 3 this is Lon Simmons for Roos Atkins several weeks ago Roos Atkins began an unprecedented fight on inflation and lowered the prices on every suit in stock during the month of November, Roos Atkins sold 10,807 suits. Men responded to Roos Atkins' fight on inflation because they recognize value. And you can join these value-minded men. Save now as Roos Atkins takes $22 off the price of every suit, regularly selling for $79.50 to $115. Save even more on suits priced $125 to $145 as Roos Atkins takes $33 off the price of each and every one. Look for greater reductions on higher-priced deluxe quality suits. And that's not all. Roos Atkins has lowered the price on every sport coat in stock. If you haven't joined Roos Atkins' fight on inflation, do it now. Use your Supercharge, Bank AmeriCard, or Master Charge. Come to your nearest Roos Atkins today. Charlie Kruger comes out of the 49er defensive line. See who replaced him. Probably be Heinemann, although I can't pick him up in that 49er defense. We will when they line up. And it is Heinemann who has replaced him. So as we start the second quarter, the 49ers lead 7-3. The Lions have a third and goal from the five. Walton goes wide to the right. McCulloch comes to the left. With Farr and Owens, the running back, behind Landry. And Landry is the running back himself. Back to pass, he goes. He looks. He gets away. A penalty flag is dropped. He goes to into the end zone, but there's a penalty flag, and there's a holding penalty against the Lions. A holding penalty that time on the Lions on Jim Yarborough. Holding Hardman. Hardman just about had Landry for a loss. And Yarborough must have grabbed him and pulled him away. Landry ran it in, but it will be a 15-yarder. And I mean a 15-yarder. This ball is marched off. I don't know what. This is marched off apparently from where, the, uh, from where he held him. So it's back to the 32, where it will be third and the 32. That penalty amounts to 27 yards, not only 27 yards, but takes the touchdown away. Now Kruger goes back in as Edwards comes out. So the 49ers have Hart, Kruger, Heinemann, and Hartman across the line for the pass rush here on Landry. Big play could push him back uh, far enough they couldn't get the field goal. Far the lone back behind Landry. He goes straight back. 49ers trying to rush. Landry throws open. It's incomplete. He had McCulloch open, and Jim Johnson came up to try to intercept. They collided, and the ball bounced away, and it'll be fourth down. McCulloch was open, but Johnson had time to return. They collided. The ball bounced away. It will be a 39-yard field goal attempt by Earl Man. The man will try for this field goal from 39 yards. He has made one. Pass from center. It's placed down. It is kicked. It is long enough. And it's good. 39-yard field goal. A look at the scoreboard with 14.43 remaining in the first half. The 49ers 7 and the Lions 6. This is Lon Simmons for Roos Atkins. 
Several weeks ago, Roos Atkins began an unprecedented fight on inflation and lowered the prices on every suit in stock. During the month of November, Roos Atkins sold 10,807 suits. Men responded to Roos Atkins' fight on inflation because they recognize value. And you can join these value-minded men. Save now as Roos Atkins takes $22 off the price of every suit, regularly selling for $79.50 to $115. Save even more on suits priced $125 to $145, as Roos Atkins takes $33 off the price of each and every one. Look for greater reductions on higher-priced deluxe quality suits. And that's not all. Roos Atkins has lowered the price on every sport coat in stock. If you haven't joined Roos Atkins' fight on inflation, do it now. Use your Supercharge, Bank AmeriCard, or Master Charge. Come to your nearest Roos Atkins today. The kick to Vic Washington up at about the 14. Comes to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35. Driven down at the 38-yard line. Almost broke it free. Jesse made the tackle on him at the 39-yard line. And Vic shaken up as Jesse put it at the 38-yard line. Almost broke that one, but Jesse grabbed him just as he was moving into the open. Knocked him down at the 38. 49ers leading 7-6. to six. Witcher comes out to the near side, and Gene Washington goes to the left. The 49ers operating from our left to our right. Brody on the first down. Gives to Larry Schreiber. Jumps over him man. Goes to the 45, to the 50, to the 40-yard line. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line of the Detroit Lions. Larry Schreiber in there really blasting through. Leaped over the line and almost was able to break it all the way. Got to the 39-yard line of the Lions. And we're having a wild one so far. It looks like it is going to be a wild game. But, you know, Larry Schreiber all season, all year long, even in the exhibition games in which he got him to play, he was always that real clutch player. He's never been really knocked backwards. He's always seems, even when he's hit solid, he's able to move forward to pick up a couple of valuable yards. First and 10 at the Lions, 39. Witcher flanked to the near side. Gene Washington split left. Brody gives to Schreiber. Fakes to Schreiber. Gives to Vic Washington. And Washington is caught by Jerry Rush. And it will be no gain. He faked to Schreiber and gave to Washington, but Rush was through there on the delay and made the tackle for second and ten now. 49ers leading seven to six, had the ball at the Detroit 39. Washington goes to the left. Witcher comes out to the near side. Schreiber and Vic Washington, the running backs behind Brody. John looks over the Lions' defense. Quick count, John, back to pass, looking for Gene Washington. Now lays it off to Vic Washington. It's a 35, knocked down as he gets to the 32. He had tried to come back to the middle, and as he did, he ran into traffic, and Bob Bell is shaken up. Bell made the tackle, and Bell is shaken up. The ball is at about the 32 of the Lions, where it will be third down and three. And Bell is shaken up. There's a timeout on the field. A look at the scoreboard with 13-19 remaining. Well, wait a minute. He's getting to his feet. We better not take time out. I guess they will not take a full time out here. Bell says he doesn't want to go out. And he's not going to go out. No. Yeah, yes, he's going to go out. Now, come on. you got to come. No, I'm not going to go out. <laughs> Bell will not go out. He is woozy. I don't think he knows which city he's in right now. And now he's going off. I'm not going to go off unless you get me my coloring book. Larry Woods replaces him. It is third down and three for the 49ers. If you've ever seen indecision in your life, it was on the part of the Lions there as to whether Bob Bell was going out or not. Third and three. Brody gives the Vic Washington on a sweep. He needs to get some blocking. He doesn't get it. He gets, keeps pulling, but he's going to be thrown at the 32. He tried to break free, but just couldn't do it. And uh, he was finally knocked down by Weger. And Norma, it's at the 32. It will be fourth down. The 49ers will send in Gossett to try for a field goal. So now Gossett will try for a 39-yarder. Mann made one for the Lions. Brody will hold. This is uh, 
angle from the near side. The angle lessens as you get deeper, of course, from the hash mark. Got it trying. There's very little wind here today to affect the flight of the ball. Place down. It's kicked. It is good. He got a 39-yarder. And look at the scoreboard with 12.08 remaining in the first half. The 49ers 10 and the Lions 6. Running out of Christmas ideas, Bruce Atkins isn't. They have stores full of ideas. And you'll find something for everyone. Warm and woolly classic sweaters, new knit slacks, and plain or fancy shirts for the men on your list. Leather looks, Bruce Atkins has everything from men's leather jackets to women's fur-trimmed coats. For the special girl on your list, find short swinging skirts, long and lovely dresses, city country pant dressings, plus mix and matchables. For the special people who have everything, Bruce Atkins has gone around the world to find the rare, the unusual, the just plain fun gifts they'll love to receive. You can pick up the Bruce Atkins Christmas catalog in any of the stores. It gives you hundreds of gift ideas at a glance and makes shopping fun. Your Roos Atkins Supercharge makes shopping even easier. Come into Roos Atkins where you'll find all the Christmas choices. That's Roos Atkins for Christmas ideas. Here's the kick going to Williams at the goal line up to the 15 to the 20 down to the 23 yard line. Bobby Williams carries out to maybe the 24-yard line. Put it at the 23. It'll be the Lions first and 10. 49ers leading 10 to 6 in the first half, 11.59 to play. Each team has been able to move the ball. The Lions have settled for two field goals. The 49ers for a touchdown and a field goal. Landry sends Walton and McCulloch out to the near side. McCulloch slotted inside. Phillips with a bad ankle having to cover some speed in this Detroit offense. Uh, give to Owens, tries to dance back, does to the 25-yard line, across the 25 to about the 26. Good move by Owens. The, the place he was headed was jammed up, and then he bounced back the other way, moved to the 26-yard line. It's a three-yard gain. It will be second down and seven. Second and seven for the Lions. 49ers leading 10 to six. The Rams have defeated the Steelers, so the 49ers have to win here today if they are to become Western Division champions. McCulloch goes wide to the far side, and Sanders, well, now he's in tight, the tight end, and Walton comes out wide to the near side with Bruce Taylor to cover him on second down and seven. In motion, <laughs> goes to Owens. The throw is to Walton, and he is undressed by Bruce Taylor. It's an incomplete pass. And Walton went up in the air. Bruce Taylor really belted him, and the ball popped out of his hands. It will be third down. One reason that really didn't work, it shouldn't have worked, he was covered well. Allie Taylor, who is the left halfback in that uh, particular setup, uh, offensively by the Detroit Lions, he swung into the pattern, drawing the linebacker and the uh, strong safety, Mel Phillips, into the area in which uh, they could have possibly knocked the ball down, and uh, that was an error on Allie Taylor. Heinemann replaces Kruger, and it's third down now. Taylor, the long back behind Landry, quick count, Landry back to pass, throws long. He's throwing for Walton. He's out in front. He can't get it. It's too long. And it'll be fourth down. So the Lions are forced to punt. Pretty good pressure put on that time by the 49ers. And uh, the fans give the defense a hand as the Lions, for the first time today, will have to kick Herman Weaver going in to do the punting. For the Lions, Bruce Taylor and Johnny Fuller back in safety looking into the sun to receive this punt. 49ers leading 10 to 6 with 10.47 remaining to play in the first half. Good pass from center. Gets the kick away and he drives it. It's a dandy. Bruce Taylor backs up, makes the catch at the 26. Gets the block, gets to the outside, gets another block. Is knocked down at the 31-yard line or 32. Boy, Colin really gave a comeback block to wipe out somebody of the Lions, and Bruce Taylor runs it to the 32. It'll be first and 10 for San Francisco. 49ers in front, 10 to 6. First half, 10-31 remaining. Witcher comes out wide to the near side. Gene Washington splits to the left. 
Willard and Vic Washington, the backs behind Brody on this first down from the 32. The Lions jump around on defense. Brody may change the call, gives off to Willard. Willard finds the gap, goes to 35, goes to the 40, across the 40 to the 42, may have the first down. See if that's the first down. I believe we'll have a measurement here to see if he has picked up enough yardage. And that's what will occur. Boy, can find the lane. That's a... In each one of the odd situations here, they were in the odd defense to the strong side. Uh, excuse me, this was to the weak side. And the 49ers, first down. Excuse me, 49ers have been uh, most effective against the odd defense. When a ball club moves into a 4-3 and start playing 4-3, Consistently, it seems like the 4 under offense bogs down a little bit. Even though 4-3 type defense, four men on the line, three linebackers, are the basic defense in professional football. But they have been most effective on counter plays against the odd defense. First and 10, the 49ers at their own 42. Brody back to pass, looks for the quick one, completes it to Washington at the 50. He goes to the 45, out of bounds at the 44-yard line of the Lions. As Clark was playing in very loose, and Brody hit Washington. Clark knocked him out of bounds at the 44 of Detroit. It will be first and 10, San Francisco. 49ers lead 10 to 6 in the first half with 9.44 remaining. Witcher comes out to the near side. And Washington comes out here with him, slotted inside Witcher. Willard and Vic Washington, the backs behind Brody. John looks over the defense of the Lions, may change the call here at the line of scrimmage. Second down, gives to Vic Washington, no opening, and he gets a yard or two, no more. They just didn't uh, have any place to go, and Lucci had him around the ankle. Mitchell helped out, but it was Lucci who was the main culprit in making the tackle at the 42. Second down and eight for San Francisco. And to six, San Francisco in front. First half, 9.15 remaining, the clock moving. Witcher out wide to the near side. Gene Washington is split left. Vic Washington and Ken Willard running backs behind Brody. John Long count. John hands on an end around to Qualic. Fakes to Qualic. Throws. Washington is open. He got ball down at the 10-yard line. Brody's pass was a little bit short, and Washington had to wait for it. And as he turned around to run, he tripped and fell at the 10-yard line. Brody faking on the end around to Ted Qualick, then threw to Washington. He had Gene wide open. He threw the ball a little bit short, and Washington had to wait for it. Consequently, when he turned around to run, he tripped and fell at the 10. Gene played that very well. He came up to uh, Clark, who is the right cornerback for the Detroit Lions, Stood there and kind of jockeyed with him a little bit as if he was going to block to really show the end around with Ted Qualley coming around into that side. And then as about at the right time in which he made the fake John Brody to Qualley, he released and went downfield. Brody had to throw that ball under tremendous pressure finally. There was one of the Lions all over him as he released it or it would have been six points. John fakes, slips, looks, throws. Touchdown 49ers to Willard. Brody hitting Willard for the touchdown. As John never saw the completion, he was really belted by Larry Hand, but he drilled it to Willard for the score. to try for the extra point. Brody really drilled that ball in. Willard had to make a good catch to hold it. He had to hold on to the ball in the pressure, but Brody fired it into his chest. Here's Gossett's kick. It's good. A look at the scoreboard. Shows with eight minutes remaining in the first half, the 49ers 17 and the Lions 6. Running out of Christmas ideas, Bruce Atkins isn't. They have stores full of ideas. You'll find something for everyone. Warm and woolly classic sweaters, new knit slacks, and plain or fancy shirts for the men on your list. Leather looks, Bruce Atkins has everything from men's leather jackets to women's fur-trimmed coats. For the special girl on your list, find short swinging skirts, long and lovely dresses, city country pant dressings, plus mix and matchables. For the special people who have everything, 
Bruce Atkins has gone round the world to find the rare, the unusual, the just plain fun gifts they'll love to receive. You can pick up the Bruce Atkins Christmas catalog in any of the stores. It gives you hundreds of gift ideas at a glance and makes shopping fun. Your Roos Atkins Supercharge makes shopping even easier. Come into Roos Atkins where you'll find all the Christmas choices. That's Roos Atkins for Christmas ideas. Williams and Jesse waiting for Gossett's kick. Gossett drills this one. And it hits the goalpost. And there will be no return. <laughs> Ron Jesse was standing there. The ball hit the goalpost. It's immediately dead. Will be brought out to 20. Bounced on Jesse's side to catch it. And said, whoop, wait a minute. And backed away as though somebody had struck a match under that football. First and 10, the Lions. Now the defense has to go to work for San Francisco. Landry has Owens and Taylor as the running back behind him. Walton to the near side, McCulloch to the far side. Landry pitches out to Taylor, getting some blocking, cuts into the 25 and is to the 27, Phillips. And Bruce Taylor made the tackle, but he picks up about seven yards. It will be second down and three. Put it at the 26 yard line, make it second down and about four, it's just across the 26. 49ers have been vulnerable to the sweep. And uh, that time, Taylor was able to get pretty good yardage. Now it's Walton to the far side, McCulloch to the near side on second down, a little less than four. I formation. Give fake to Owens. Landry's going to run himself. They don't even see him, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 38. The linebacker, Vanderbunt, was coming out with Taylor, and he didn't even see Landry running on that one. Landry ran right by him to the 37 39 yard line for a first down. This is the quarterback option play where he where the quarterback takes the ball, runs down the line of scrimmage, and has the option to lay it off to his back coming behind him. Uh, of course, Landry has been very, very successful this year with the play, and it's the timing in which he uses it because they only use it maybe not more than five times and as little as three, but he will use it. At the 39, first and 10, the Lions in their own territory. Walton to the near side, McCulloch to the far side, Landry fakes beautifully, back to pass, going long for Walton, he's trying to split the defense, Phillips can't make the interception, as Phillips and Bruce Taylor were covering Walton, Phillips coming over from his safety position, the ball was thrown too long, and Phillips tried to make an over-the-head catch. So it'll be second down and 10, the ball brought back to the 39, Landry made an excellent fake that time. Lions send uh, both Walton and McCulloch to the far side. Second down and 10 from the 39, their own 39. The 49ers lead 17 to 6. 49ers offside. Landry back to pass, trying to set up the screen. He completes the screen to Owens. Owens is hit at the 45-yard line. The 49ers were offside, however, and the uh, Lions will see if they want to take a six-yard gain or on the player a five-yard penalty and I assume they'll probably take the penalty to make it a second down and uh, five the ball is moved to the 44 49ers trying to time Landry's cadence jumped offside it will be second and five at the 44 the Lions own 44 49ers lead 17 to 6 with seven minutes remaining in the first half Walton and McCulloch to the far side. McCulloch slotted inside Walton. Taylor and Owens are the running backs behind Landry on the second and five. Landry straight back to pass. He has time. He throws. Lobs it out to Taylor. He can't hold it. It was overthrown. It will be third down and five. Taylor is flaring out to the far side, and the pass was too high for him. It will be a third and five. Heinemann replaces Kruger in the 49er defensive line. There's one thing, the way uh, Landry was trying to hit... Uh uh, his receiver on that, his receiver as he swung around out of the backfield went out in the flat and looking back he's looking into the sun, the sun is a, a big factor here but uh, Landry, he had a short reception that time but uh, he, he kind of drilled a little too hard third and five, the lone back 
behind Landry is Taylor with Owens flank to the near side. Waltman, McCulloch to that. Landry back to pass. He throws. It is complete to McCulloch at the 30 or 41 yard line of the 49ers. Boy, he drilled that one in there. Good pass by Landry, and it's the first and 10 as McCulloch makes the reception at the 41 of San Francisco. Kruger comes back in, replacing Heinemann. The 49ers unable to get to Landry. They're coming close but he's having time to get rid of the ball. And he hit McCulloch beautifully with that one. First and 10 for the Lions, 6.25 remaining in the first half. 49ers 17, the Lions 6. The Lions have the eye formation with Owens and Taylor behind Landry on this first down. Walton flanked to the near side, McCulloch split right. The give is to Owens. He breaks through to the 37-yard line. A gain of four, maybe five, if they get to, to the 36. Close to the 36. It'll be second down and a little over five yards to go. Owens must be getting close to that 1,000-yard mark. Second down, a little over five yards to go. Taylor, the lone back behind Landry on the second down. Pitch out to Taylor. Cuts back in behind a block is to the 33, maybe the 32. Edwards coming over along with Nunley and Vanderbilt. Got good blocking in front of Taylor on that sweep. It's placed at the 33. It'll be third down and two now for the Lions. Clock moving with 5.15 remaining. In the first half, the 49ers lead 17 to 6. Third and two from the 33. These two offenses have really been testing the defenses in the first half. Each moving very well. Been only one punt, that by the Lions. Third and two, Owens and Taylor, the running back behind Landry. Landry, quarterback sneak, breaks free, goes to the 25, to the 23. That's what he likes to do on that quarterback sneak, a strong runner, and he burst through for the first down to the 23. Roosevelt Taylor made the tackle on him, so it is first and 10. Usually on a play like this in a quarterback sneak with that many yards, they had about two yards to go for a first down, is that they'll delay a little bit, let the block set up, and then they'll take off, but not on this uh, particular play. Uh, Landry, as soon as the ball was snapped, he just followed his center, put his head down, and he did break loose. Landry close to breaking Tobin Rose's record for yardage for a quarterback. Quick give to Taylor. Taylor gets to the 20 for a three-yard gain. Knocked backwards from the 20, but he'll have an advance to the 20. It will be second down and seven. Second and seven from the 20. Landry coming into the game needed 18 yards to tie Tobin Roth's record for a number of yards gained on the ground in a season by a quarterback, and I believe he probably has that much yardage by now. High formation, second down and seven. Owen and Taylor behind Landry. McCulloch to the near side, Walton to the far side. Landry, long count. He rolls out hands to Owens. Owens drives across the 15 to the 14-yard line. They're opening up holes in that 49er defense. It really is a test against the defense with Landry able to run as he can and the strong running back. The uh, linemen and linebackers held by the fakes and then the pressure put on as the Lions move the ball to the 14. Going out is McCulloch. Coming in as another tight end is Craig Cotton. It is third down and a yard for the Lions. Last time they had short yardage, Landry quarterback sneak for a big yardage. Owens and Taylor behind Landry. He gives to Taylor on a sweep. Cuts back in, has the first down. Breaks free, he goes for the touchdown. Oh, what a run by Aldi Taylor as he left a string of 49ers as he made an excellent move. It looked as though they might have him jammed up but he cut back sharply and goes in for the touchdown from 14 yards out. And now, Mann will try for the extra point. 80 yards and 11 plays. 14 yards by Taylor. Mann to try for this extra point. They will move the Lions to within four points. Place down, it's kicked, then it's good. So the 49ers 
in front 17 to 13 with 243 remaining in the half. You? Uh, that was an exceptionally fine running by Aldi Kaler. It was a sweep to the right. He got the two initial blocks to be able to break at the line of scrimmage and uh, just real good second effort. And I'll tell you, this little Aldi Taylor's got lots and lots of speed. One of the things that the Detroit Lion has all the way down the line, uh, their, their receivers and their back, except for Owens, they got great speed. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. If you listen to KSFO for 49er football, be sure you also listen to me, Dan Sorkin, from 10 to 1 right here on KSFO in San Francisco. Unofficially, Landry has established a new running record for a quarterback with 525 yards, and Steve Owens has become the first in line to go over the 1,000-yard mark in the Detroit history as he has 1,002 yards. 49ers lead 17 to 13, and it appears the way things have gone so far, they're just going to have to outscore the Lions if they win this one. And that's natural in any game. You have to get more points than the other team to win, but... Uh, this, I mean, they've got a lead right now, four points, but it doesn't appear as though defensively they're going to be strong enough to contain the Lions. They're going to have to go point for point with them the rest of the way. Man to do the kicking as Vic Washington and Doug Cunningham wait. A line drive kick that bounds uh, to Ed Beard. He comes to 25 to the 30 to the 35 to the 36 yard line. Ed Beard just wrapped his arms around that ball and ran straight ahead. He didn't care how much he made. He just didn't. He wanted to arrive at the spot where he was going to be on the ground with the football. And that's what he did. He held on to it to the 36-yard line, and it will be first and 10 for the 49ers, leading 17 to 13 with 2 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Lots of time in this first half. Willard and Vic Washington, the running backs behind Brody, Gene Washington and Dick Witcher to the left. The give is to Vic Washington. A little hole. He goes through it to the 42-yard line. That by Newman. Wigger in on Wigger hit him from the side. And Nama, the linebacker, carried to the 42. It is a six-yard gain. Second down and four for San Francisco. Two minute warning and the two-minute warning to the benches. Join Ruth Atkins in the fight on inflation. Save on every suit and every sports coat in stock. The 49ers are accepting deposits for 1972 season tickets. Ten dollars per ticket deposited now with the 49ers will assure a priority number for 1972 in Candlestick Park. Just send ten dollars for each ticket requested to the San Francisco 49ers, 1255 Post Street, Suite 300, San Francisco 94109. And look forward to another successful junior 49er minor season in 72. Ball at the 42-yard line of the 49ers, where it'll be second down and four. Timeout on the field. The 49ers lead 17 to 13, and it's been quite an offensive first half. The Lions scored first after an interception by Lem Barney. They got a field goal. 49ers came back to score on a pass to Dick Witcher. And then the Lions got another field goal, make it 7-6. to six. 49ers picked up a field goal to go out in front 10-6, and then a touchdown, and Brody throwing to Willard to make it 17-6, to six. but now Aldi Taylor has scored on a 14-yard run. And it's 17-13, to 13, and the 49ers have the ball at their own 42. Forrest Blue up over the ball. Gene Washington and Dick Witcher go wide to the left. Rasmussen and Clark to cover them. And now Walker, the linebacker, moves out head and head with Gene Washington. Brody back to pass, looking, lays it off to Willard. Willard at the 40, gets a block, goes to the 50, and down at the 50-yard line. Clark made the tackle as Vic Washington gave him a comeback block that time to spring him to midfield for the first down. Clark moving with a minute and 45. Gene of eight. Right at midfield. High formation, Vic Washington, Ken Willard. Gene Washington slotted inside Dick Witcher to the near side. Blitz is on, a give to Willard, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage by Jerry Rush. He got by the blitz man, and they had the blitz on, and Willard got by the linebacker. 
barreling in, but he didn't get by Jerry Rush. He's tackled after he gained the foot. The 49ers request a timeout with a minute 26 seconds remaining. Here's the scores of other games. New England upset Baltimore today, 21 to 17. And Miami beat Green Bay 27 to 6, so Miami wins the Eastern Division of the American Conference. And the Baltimore will be in the playoffs, but Miami is the champion. Cleveland beat Washington 20 to 13. The Rams beat Pittsburgh 23 to 14. And that is the reason for the importance of this game right now. The Jets thumped Cincinnati 35 to 21. Minnesota, the last score we had, 17 to nothing over Chicago at halftime. They must have brought that score by Pony Express. San Diego 23, Houston 7 in the second quarter. Buffalo and Kansas City tied 9 and 9 in the second quarter. Cleveland beat Washington 20 to 13. might not have been too smart a move for Miami to win today. They get to play Kansas City in the first game, while Baltimore will play Cleveland in the first game of the American Conference playoff. Now Williams and uh, Vaughn come into the secondary, replacing Namath and Walker as they get some more deep men in that secondary. Second down, and almost 10. Brody back to pass. Straight back, has time. Throws oh. an interception. Barney dropped the ball. Oh, there was six points for the Lions, but I believe Qualick just got a hand on Barney's arm to keep him from being able to hold that ball because he was gone for six points. As Barney was guarding Qualick, Brody threw the ball out to the side, and Barney had nothing in front of him but the goal line. Third down, and almost 10. Boy, it was, that was close. 49ers have been hurt on the close to end of the first half plays, interceptions, and they were almost killed by that one. Third down, Brody straight back to pass. Big rush, he lays it off to Qualic. Qualic is to the 45, and that's all. It will be a fourth down. And now the Lions really trying to take Qualic apart at the 45. McCann will come in to do the kicking for San Francisco with a minute remaining. In the first half, McCann will come in to do the punting. The clock is running now with 50 seconds remaining. The clock running down. 17 to 13, the 49ers lead. San Francisco taking as much time as it can before this punt. The Lions changing people back and forth. Now so are the 49ers. Barney and Walton are the deep men waiting for McCann's punt. 30 seconds remaining. 28. Pass from center. Low pass. He gets the kick away just barely. Line drive kick. Walton signals for a fair catch. Uh, McCann does an act there as he falls down as though he were hit by Jesse. But there's no flag. And the Lions will have the ball at their own 13 with 22 seconds remaining. In this first half. The Lions will probably stall out the clock here with only 22 seconds left. I doubt if they will try anything real fancy. The clock is moving and the Lions aren't going to aren't going to uh, run a play, I don't believe. They won't have to. They don't. Now they come up to the line of scrimmage with about 10 seconds remaining. Clock moving with six. Landry Long count. Landry gives off to Owens. Owens is to the 15-yard line. And uh, there's no time. The gun sounds ending the first half. A look at the scoreboard. Shows the 49ers 17, the Lions 13. This is Lon Simmons for Roos Atkins. Several weeks ago, Roos Atkins began an unprecedented fight on inflation and lowered the prices on every suit in stock. During the month of November, Roos Atkins sold 10,807 suits. Men responded to Roos Atkins' fight on inflation because they recognize value. And you can join these value-minded men. Save now as Roos Atkins takes $22 off the price of every suit, regularly selling for $79.50 to $115. Save even more on suits priced $125 to $145. 
as Roos Atkins take $33 off the price of each and every one. Look for greater reductions on higher price deluxe quality suits. And that's not all. Roos Atkins has lowered the price on every sport coat in stock. If you haven't joined Roos Atkins' fight on inflation, do it now. Use your Supercharge, Bank America card, or Master Charge. Come to your nearest Roos Atkins today. At halftime, we're going to have a punt, pass, and kick contest between, among the ex-49ers. As uh, they are being introduced, the 49er alumni being introduced uh, on the field right now. And a little later, we'll have a punt, pass, and kick contest. We will also be talking to Dan McGuire, formerly with the 49ers, now the sports editor of the Honolulu Advertiser, and we'll be chatting with Dan in a little bit. Let's review the scoring. The Lions got on the scoreboard first as Lem Barney intercepted a John Brody pass, ran it to the 49ers' 42-yard line, and finally, Errol Mann kicked a 31-yard field goal to put the Lions in front three to nothing. 49ers came back on a 70-yard drive as Brody passed to Dick Witcher for 12 yards and the touchdown that gave the 49ers a 7-3 lead. Then a 39-yard field goal by Mann made it 49ers 7 and the Lions 6. Bruce Gossett also kicked the 39-yard field goal to put the 49ers in front 10-6. Then a uh, John Brody passed to Ken Willard of 10 yards, put the 49ers in front 17-6, but the Lions came back on an 80-yard mark, a 14-yard 14-yard sweep by Aldi Taylor for the touchdown that uh, made it a 17 to uh, 13 ball game. For those of you who have just tuned in, it is halftime here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, and the scoreboard shows the 49ers 17, the Detroit Lions 13. Today's 49er game is being brought to you by your local Metropolitan Life representative. Ask him about the new you and your family analysis. And by Ruth Atkins, the champions of the clothing league. Shop now at the Ruth Atkins near you. Also by the more than 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers across the country serving you Chevron gasoline with F310. The Action Age gasoline. And by Chevrolet, a better way to see the USA. Scores of other games, Saturday, Dallas bumped St. Louis 31-12. to Dallas uh, wins the Eastern Division of the National Football Conference. Atlanta 24, New Orleans 20 today. Philadelphia 41, the New York Giants 10. Minnesota 27, Chicago Bears 10. The LA Rams 23, Pittsburgh 14. Cleveland 20, Washington 13. Miami 27, Green Bay 6 as Miami wins the Eastern Division of the American Conference. Kansas City 22, Buffalo 9, the New York Jets 35, Cincinnati 21, New England 21, Baltimore 17, and Houston 49, San Diego 33. Ed Hughes got the offense going in that one. Before continuing with our halftime activities, let's take another look at the scoreboard. It shows the 49ers 17, the Detroit Lions 13. You know, to keep your car's engine running young, it's important to change the oil regularly. And if you have any doubt as to how often that should be, Check with your standard Chevron dealer. He'll recommend the best oil change schedule for your particular make and model car. To do everything you can for the life of your car's engine, you should also make sure you're using a superior Chevron motor oil. Chevron motor oils are designed to deliver top performance for your money. That means oils you can count on in the winter cold to cling to your engine's vital moving parts for faster starts and smoother running. Oils tough enough to hold up under the hottest freeway driving. So whatever Chevron oil you use, Chevron Custom, Chevron Supreme, or Chevron Special, you can expect top performance. Keep your car running young. Change the oil as often as your standard Chevron dealer recommends. And make sure it's a change for the better. A change to Chevron motor oils. Only at standard stations and Chevron dealers. Well, a great touch here as Dick Berg is having the 49ers some of the uh, old-timers, like Leo Namalini, Billy Wilson, J.D. Smith coming in in uh, old cars, those <laughs> vintage model cars. And uh, the rest of the 49er alums on the field. Well, another 49er alum is with us here, Dan McGuire, who was the PR man for the 49ers for many years, now sports editor of the Honolulu Advertiser. Dan, uh, you get to come back every once in a while. 
coming back to sort of a new scene here at Candlestick Park. Well, it really is, Lon. I was up here for the uh, Cleveland exhibition game, so I had seen the park uh, for the first time then, but they've really done a lot of work. It looks great. And thanks for giving me a promotion. Uh, Hal Wood is sports editor at Hall That's right. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Hal is probably... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the boss. I better get... He's probably listening to the game. <laughs> well, Hal, uh, we just we just said that because uh, we're trying to give Dan a little raise. Maybe get a raise when you get back. I don't want to don't hurt you. Right. <laughs> Dan, uh, you know, Honolulu is uh, right on the verge, I guess, of becoming a... A pro metropolis, both football and baseball, I guess. You've done such a remarkable job with your minor league baseball team. That's right. They've been the best drawing club in minor league baseball. And, of course, uh, you know, Honolulu, and in fact, all the islands are sports crazy, Lon. And uh, obviously within, say, three or four years, there'll be both uh, major league baseball and major league football. I think maybe major league football might come a little earlier. The new stadium is under construction. The target date is the fall of 73. It might be a little bit later, but it will, Honolulu is a major league sports town, and it will be one, in fact, in a few years. Have you had any concrete uh, promises of uh, major league franchises over there? Well, particularly as far as football is concerned, Lon, on a number of occasions, uh, Com Commissioner Pete Rosell of the National Football League has said that Honolulu is definitely one of the cities that will be considered for expansion. And the uh, idea, of course, is to go to 32 clubs eventually, and Honolulu certainly uh, ranks right up among the top possibilities. Well, and as far as the amateur sports goes, uh, your basketball tournament over there around the holiday season, uh, the University of Hawaii certainly plays a fine football schedule. You, uh, the uh, islands have be, been made famous by your amateur sports. Well, also. that's right. The university has made a tremendous comeback in sports, particularly in basketball and football. We had a very good season this year. The university gave Nebraska a pretty good game down there. It was 45 to 3, which is a lot better than a lot of Nebraska opponents did. And in uh, basketball, Red Roach's team went to the NIT last year, and he has, I think, even a better team this year, and uh, they're a team to watch all season. Yeah, the Rainbow Classic coming up. Is that uh, the... That's uh, in, at Christmas time. That's a great one, uh, Lon. It uh, has been sold out, you know, for a number of years. Uh, it, they bring down some of the finer teams in the country, and it's, it's really a great sporting event. The only trouble is uh, when the HIC, the big arena, was built, uh, it holds about 7,800 people for basketball, which many people said could never possibly be filled, and now they could probably get 25,000 in for a basketball game if they had the seats. Well, now, weather is a factor, uh, certainly for visitors and for living for relaxing and for vacationing and enjoying the weather in Hawaii is perfect. Well, what about for sports? Well, it's great for sports. Uh, many, most football games, uh, as far as the college games, are played at night, uh, Lon. I don't know whether it's absolutely necessary. Uh, the university has done that over the years, primarily because high school football is big and the high schools play on Saturdays in the stadium and then Saturday afternoon, so the university has played night ball. But really, we do get a few days a year where the temperature gets up a little high and the humidity, but over above that, it's, it's the most perfect climate in the world, I think. And Lon, uh, you know, I could use a little of that warmth right now. Here you are sitting in your shirt sleeves, and I have an overcoat on, and I'm still cold. <laughs> I think it's all in what you get used to. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, uh, you mentioned the high school. The program, the high school program, I remember uh, in the, when I was in the service over there and uh, then uh, visiting. The high school programs over there generate a great deal of interest. Yes, they, they still do. Uh, the university, of course, has had a renaissance in football, which perhaps has taken a little bit of the interest away from the high schools. And then uh, the, uh, there are two leagues now in the high school. The, uh, there's a public school league and a private school league. And that may have dropped a little interest because a lot of great old rivalries were dropped. But still, the uh, high schools are, are, you know, having banner crowds for their bigger games. Is there much inter-island rivalry, uh, Dan, in the, in the high school? Uh, uh, no, not to any great extent. Oh, there, there could be in the future, Lon. Uh, you know, there may be a, a, may, a high school conference, including all schools from the other islands. Uh, usually, as far as football is concerned, the uh, team, uh, high schools play uh, preseason games with the other islands. However, in basketball, a little different matter. Hilo High School on the Big Island of Hawaii has had great basketball teams. They've always been a top contender in the uh, state uh, and also good basketball down on Maui. So in basketball, there has been a lot of inter-island rivalry. 
I think that uh, probably the folks on the mainland, the sports fans, uh, tend to be a little blasé. There are so many uh, activities, uh, so many pro teams and such that they wonder a bit, well, why does the guy go to the islands if he's a sports writer why do, or a sports announcer or something? Why go over there when uh, you have so many sports attractions here? Well, I'll start by saying this. That first of all, it's the greatest place in the world to live, Lon. That's and one. Secondly, if uh, you have to work, it's a very pleasant place to work. And uh, as far as sports go, uh, you see, we get, uh, for example, the Giants are coming down for baseball this spring. Uh, we get, we've had the Milwaukee Bucks and the Lakers down there the last two years for basketball, just before the pro basketball season has started. And uh, we see them all, and it's four and a half hours from San Francisco, so it's really... Like in the old days, you used to take us four hours to go to Los Angeles. Well, it's nothing now as far as coming up to see a few ball games up here. And, of course, eventually we will have our own Major League Sports, so it's going to be bigger and better than ever. Dan, what about uh, the look of the 49ers? Uh, you went through some years with uh, San Francisco when they had exciting ball clubs, but they just failed to win. And uh, it was against the same Detroit ball club in 1957 when you came closest to your championship again. Well, Lon, I've suffered with you all season. I, if the game is on television, I turn the picture on, but turn you on uh, as far as the voice goes, naturally. And I know that you've had, you and Hugh have had some dark moments and really, uh, I saw the team against Cleveland in that exhibition opener, and they looked so smooth and great. And then uh, just uh, from then on, they just kind of seemed to have penalties and everything else. A lot of hard luck, hard breaks, but they're certainly playing a fine ball game today. Well, Herb Kane, who's one of the all-time sports experts, as you know, Dan, yeah. uh, he said uh, he had... He said, well, he's getting tired of hearing me cry every time the 49ers uh, lose two or three yards. But one of the reasons, I believe, was because the 49ers did look so smooth, so uh, poised in, in that in preseason. It looked like they would have no trouble at all this year. Right. Uh, there have been a lot of bad breaks, and just crazy things have happened, Lon. Uh, that first Ram game, I, I just couldn't believe it, and also the second one, and the New Orleans game here. Well, that New Orleans game was probably the probably the crusher as far as the uh, 49er fans were concerned. They figured that was in the bank after beating That's Minnesota. Right. Then uh, back in New York there, when Namath came in in that second half, that turned into a real hair raiser. Uh, Y.A. Tittle is just passing. <laughs> Y.A. Tittle down there. They're having a punt pass and kick contest among the old 49ers. And Y.A. just threw the ball from uh, 145 and he threw it into the end zone, so he threw it uh, almost 60 yards. You know, he's going to have a sore arm for a couple of months, I think. <laughs> well, why he doesn't have to worry, because he doesn't have to comb his hair, you know, so <laughs> right. he doesn't have to worry about using a comb. Dan, thanks so much. Say hello to everybody for us and tell Hal I didn't mean to demote him. That's all right. It's great to see you and Hugh and all the other guys. It's been a real good trip. Dan McGuire. And that winds up our halftime activities. And as we go into the second half, the scoreboard shows the 49ers 17, the Detroit Lions 13. When you reduce the lead in gasoline, what happens to performance? Standard Oil asks professional race driver Leroy Yarbrough to test the performance of Chevron low-lead gasoline at California's tough Laguna Seca Raceway in a conventional V8-powered passenger car that can use low-lead regular. After two days of grueling, wide-open driving, Leroy commented about Chevron low-lead. Well, the gasoline did everything that I could expect to do in this one. I was really impressed. As far as performance is concerned, I really don't think the average motorist could ask for more from a gasoline than I got from Chevron low lead. Chevron low lead regular. And for cars that can run on gasoline without lead, Chevron unleaded. For full performance and less maintenance cost, Chevron low lead and Chevron unleaded, both with F310, the Action Age gasolines. Available at all standard stations and Chevron dealers. All our guests interviewed receive blue chip stamps. Set a goal for yourself and then get, get it with blue chips to him. The goal, that is. Whether it's for a football or a color TV to watch the game. When you say blue chip stamps, you're saving money. You'll find them at all PNX markets. The stats in the first half, the 49ers 10 first downs, the Lions 9. The 49ers made 187 total yards, the Lions 190. 49ers had 54 rushing, 133 passing. The Lions had 98 rushing, 92 passing. Brody was 9 for 12 for 133 yards. Landry 4 for 11 for 92 yards. 
Taylor gained 40 yards and seven carries. Owens, 29 yards and eight carries. Landry, 23 yards and two carries. Vic Washington added 17 uh, yards and eight carries. Willard, four uh, carries for 14 yards. Larry Schreiber, 23 yards on one carry. 49ers will kick off to start the second half going from our right to our left. It all depends on these final two quarters as Gossett kicks towards Jesse and Williams. And it's Williams at the goal line. Up the near side to the 10, cuts back to the middle to the 15. Oh, he's got a lane. He's to the 25 blockers in front of him. He's to the 40, and out of bounds he goes at the 41-yard line. He came to the near side, then went to the far side, and they got the 49er defenders wiped out. And it was only Preston Riley who uh, was there to put some pressure on him on the far side. He ran out of room and stepped out of bounds at the 40. So the Lions have good field position to start the second half. The 49ers lead 17 to 13. Landry has Owens and Aldi Taylor in the backfield behind him. Has McCulloch slotted inside Walton to the near side on first and 10. And a give to Owens. A big hole. He goes to almost midfield to the 49-yard line. Knocked off his feet by Roosevelt Taylor and Bruce Taylor. He is short of the first down by a yard. It is second down and one. And nine. Second and the yard. 49ers have stopped the Lions only once. And the Lions actually have stopped the 49ers only once in the first half. Now the Lions on the move from their own 49. Walton flanked to the near side, McCulloch split left. The Lions, a tough ball club, and Landry directing the attack, gives off to Owens to the outside, he breaks the tackle, he goes to the 40 to the 39 yard line of the 49er. Tackled there by Earl Edwards, put it at the 38. Bill Belk going into the 49er defensive line now, and Hardman will come out. And the 39. So just inside the 39, the Lions on the move to start this second half. They have moved from their own 40. Have it first and 10. 49ers are going to have to get tough defensively in the second half. They lead 17 to 13, but the Lions have been in, have been unable, I mean have been able to move the ball. A pitch out to Taylor to the outside. Good blocking in front of him. Cuts in, goes to the 35, to the 33-yard line, maybe the 32. Belt made the tackle. Oh, they got outside on the 49ers that time, and Taylor, who broke one for a touchdown, was on the move there to the 32. That will be a gain of six yards. Well, put it at the 33. Make it about a little over five yards. Second down. And less than five to go. The Lions come out roaring in this second half. And the 49er fans start chanting defense. And I will agree. Walton wide to the near side. McCulloch to the left. Eye formation. Owens and Taylor. Landry. Gives to Taylor. He goes to the 31-yard line and then a bounce backwards. They closed up on him that time as Kruger and Edwards and Tommy Hart zeroed in on him at the 31. Belt comes out and Hardman goes back in. It's third down now and uh, about three yards to go from the 31. Lions led three to nothing. The 49ers led seven to three and seven to six. 10 to 6 and 17 to 6 now leads 17 to 13 and the Lions with third and three at the 31 in a similar situation Landry carried on a quarterback sneak for a first down he's back to pass he has time he throws incomplete the pass receiver Sanders slips and fell and a penalty flag roughing the passer roughing the passer is going to be called against Earl Edwards And Edwards comes out. Heinemann will go in. I believe there will be a roughing the passer penalty against the 49ers. And that's what it will be. That moves the ball to the 15-yard line and a first down for the Lions. A roughing the passer penalty. As Landry was just getting rid of that ball, I don't know if it was Edwards or who, but somebody came flying in on him, was putting pressure. I don't know how he could have stopped. He must have done something besides just hit him. So the Lions get a break. They, it was going to be fourth down, and now it is a first down situation at the 49ers, just outside their 15-yard line. And the defense has to go to work again. First and 10, long count by Landry. He's back to pass, looking for the quick one. Throws! It is incomplete. Oh, and a penalty is called to the calling pass interference against Phillips. Phillips went up in the air to bat the ball away. 
pass interference is called. A pass interference called against Phillips as he went up in the air to bat that ball away intended for Sanders. It was sort of a delayed call. But a call nevertheless, and the Lions have it first and goal from the three. So two penalties have given the Lions a first down from the three where they were going to be fourth down from the 31. Landry with that strong running attack. Now he sends Taylor over to the left, taking a little time here. Walton flanked out to the right. Landry running himself, cuts in. He is in for the touchdown, I believe, or not. Is he short? He's right on the goal line. He's short of it by about a foot. Landry on that rollout, and Roosevelt Taylor made the tackle right at the goal line. So the Lions are just a foot away from taking the lead. Second down and goal. Taylor and Owens behind Landry. Penalties really putting the Lions in business on this drive. Landry to Owens. Touchdown, Lions. And the Lions take the lead. So the Lions have gone in front. And... Man will try to make it a 20 to 17 lead. The 49ers drop behind for the first time since early in the going. Rasmussen to hold. Place down, it's kicked, then it's good. And look at the scoreboard with 11-24 remaining in the third quarter. The Lions 20, the 49ers 17. Today's highways aren't half as dull as they used to be because today's highway planners have been doing some pretty nice things along the highways, like landscaping them with trees and flowers and lookout posts that really give highways a fresh new look. And there's also a fresh new look at many standard stations and Chevron dealers along those highways and in town as well. That's because of Standard Oil Company of California's extensive station rebuilding program. Starting with a brighter looking Chevron sign, Chevron dealers and standard station installations are being redesigned from top to bottom. New stations are appearing everywhere. In addition, many existing standard and Chevron stations are being remodeled to incorporate the clean new lines of these modern service centers. What do all these changes mean for you? First, an even more attractive, more inviting place to stop for gasoline. And second, more efficiency and speed in serving you. Look for the new look of the standard stations and Chevron dealers and make your next stop for gasoline a more pleasant experience than ever before. 49ers trailing by three. And we will give you a station identification after this kickoff that man is teeing up the ball to kick off with Vic Washington and Doug Cunningham waiting. The Lions led three to nothing at one time. And this is the first time they've been back in the lead since. And they're in front 20 to 17. Man's kick is high and short, headed towards Vic Washington at the third, at the eight, up to the ten, to the fifteen, to the twenty-five, to the thirty, to the thirty-four yard line. Stopped at the thirty-four. The 49ers. It'll be first and ten. We'll pause for station identification. That's the Golden West Radio Network. Want to get more out of life? Then try KSFO at any time of day. I'm Dr. McGovern, and I'm on duty between 4 and 8 every afternoon, right here on KSFO San Francisco, the world's greenest radio station. A hand off to Vic Washington. He goes across the 35 to the 37. The ball at the 36 or 37 yard line. And it's a gain of three, put it at the 37, second and seven. 49ers trailing 20 to 17, 10 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Witcher and Washington go out wide to the far side with Barney and Wigger to cover them. On second down, Brody's back to pass, looking for Willard, swings it out to Willard, trying to get a block. He cuts back at the 40, goes to the 43. 
Vic Washington was looking one way and looking towards the inside. Had he given uh, the block to the outside, Willard might have been able to go for a little more yardage. He is close to the first down at the 43. Will be about a yard short. Depends on where the ball is going to be placed. Put it at the 43, and it's about a yard short on third down. Windsor goes in replacing Gene Washington. Third in the yard for the 49ers. They trail 20 to 17. Teams just about even in yardage in the first half. A three yard difference in total yardage. Now the 49ers need a yard to keep this drive going. Brody to Willard. Has the first down, goes to midfield, goes to the 46 yard line of the line. Tackle there by Wigger and Clark, but he gets the first down by plenty. And San Francisco has it first and 10 at the 46 of Detroit. Today's action being brought to you by Chevron Action Age Gasolines, available at more than 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers nationwide. Then offense, offense here today, both sides moving the ball. Now, Witcher comes wide to the left. Gene Washington is split to the right on the first down from the 46 of the line. To give to Vic Washington, finds a hole, goes to the 40, to the 34-yard line. Knocked off his feet by Wager as he got to the 34, and it will be another 49er first down. That was a beautifully executed, executed play, as what you call a full block. The center blue blocked back to his right. The left guard, Beisler, took his man head on. The right guard, Peoples, came around blue and picked up uh, Lucci, the middle linebacker. Beautifully executed play. First and 10 from the 34, Gene Washington, split left, Witcher flank to the right, the 49ers go from our right to our left, Vic Washington and Ken Willard, the running back behind Brody on this first down. Brody's back to pass, they rush, he throws for Washington, he can't get it, Gene was turning to the sidelines and the pass was thrown short, he had his man beaten, and Brody was not Galley West, there's no uh, call of fans. Upset because Earl Edwards was called for roughing the passer and Brody was bounced by two men after he threw that one. But there's no flag and the fans figured there should be. So it will be second and ten. Brody didn't have too much time to get rid of that ball. Uh, had Gene turned a little bit sooner, he might have been able to come back to get it. Second and ten. Brody coming up to the line of scrimmage rather slowly as Gene Washington is to the left. Brody back looking for the quick pass. Throws, completes it over the middle to Witcher at the 30. And it's a gain of about four yards. Witcher to the 30-yard line. He gathered a crowd there as Lucci and Nama. And Walker, the three linebackers, converged. It is third down now and six from the 30. Third and six. The Lions putting on a pretty good pass rush now against Brody. 20 to 17, the Lions in front with 7 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 49ers were in a spot where it looked as though they might take the game away in the first half, leading 17 to 6, but the Lions have come back with two touchdowns. Washington left, Witcher right, Brody back to pass, third and six, looks, throws for Washington, he's open, he has a touchdown, 49ers! Brody threw the ball just over the fingertips of Al Clark, and Washington caught the ball in the end zone for the touchdown. on the touchdown pass to Washington and the 49ers take the lead again as Gossett will try for the extra point. Place down, kick, it's good. A look at the scoreboard with 7.21 remaining in the third quarter. The 49ers 24, the Lions 20. The road up Haleakala Volcano in the Hawaiian Islands twists and climbs its way to the top of the crater, 10,000 feet above sea level. At high speeds, it's one of the most demanding roads in the world. Graham Hill, one of the world's great professional race drivers and twice winner of the World Driving Championship, is testing the performance of Chevron low-lead gasoline in a conventional passenger car that can use low-lead. The purpose, to see what happens to performance when you use a reduced lead gasoline. I've been racing cars for 15 years now, but I've never put a crash thing to this kind of test. 
we're really asking a great deal from the gallery, and Chevron Lowled is performing beautifully. It's giving me excellent response. Chevron Lowled regular. And for cars that can run on gasoline without lead, Chevron unleaded. Both with F310. The Action Age gasoline. Gossett will be kicking off. That, uh, that uh, pass from Brody to Washington reminiscent of last year's game against the Raiders in which uh, Brody completed only 7 of 21 passes against the Raiders. Uh, they talked last year about the Raiders letting down for that game because they already had their conference or division clinch. But the fact was they played excellent defense. The thing was that Brody was so sharp on his passing in that game, his long passes, that he was hitting the touchdowns by a matter of a quarter of an inch. And that's what he did on this play, just over the fingertips of Clark. Here's Gossett's kick. Waiting for it, Jesse and Williams. Williams, five yards deep, will not come out with it. The ball will be put in play at the 20-yard line. And the 49er defense now needs to uh, make a turnover. The Lions have played faultlessly on offense. They have not made any mistakes. One of the problems that the 49ers are having defensively against the uh, Detroit Lions is the different formations in which they are showing. They're not showing any man in motion, but they're in the I formation. They use split backs. They use trips right. They use, with a sense of trips right, with only one back in the backfield to the strong side with his two receivers. First and ten, Taylor and Owens behind Landry. Walton to the near side, McCulloch to the far side. Landry gives off to Owens. First through to the 25-yard line, but well, these offenses can move the ball. And it's a gain of about five. Put it right at the 25, make it second down and five. No doubt that these offenses out there today are putting on quite a show. This 49ers best offensive day of the year. They seem to come out of it against Atlanta last week in the first half, and certainly Brody has been moving them well today. McCulloch wide to the near side, walking to the far side. Taylor and Owens behind Landry, second down and five from the 25 of Detroit. Landry, long count, gives to Owens. Owens gets a yard or so. They ganged up on him that time. Hardman had him around the ankles, and he got some help from Phillips and from Edwards. They stop him after a gain of, well, maybe almost two, so it will be a third and a little over three. Third and slightly more than three for the Lions. The Pasadena House here now rooting for the 49ers to stop the Lions on this third down play. Back split behind Landry on third down. McCulloch to the near side. Jim Johnson covering him. 49ers faking a blitz. Back to pass goes Landry. Straight back. He throws. It is complete to Walton. Bruce Taylor makes the tackle at the 40-yard line. But it will be a first down for the Lions. Landry getting time to throw, and he hit Walton for the first down. Up across the 40, maybe right on the 40-yard line. That's where it is, but it is enough for the first down. First and 10 for Detroit. San Francisco is going to have to put some pressure on Landry. He's getting a lot of time to throw. Walton wide to the near side. To the far side, McCulloch on first down. Owens and Taylor. Landry fakes. Back to pass. Throwing long for McCulloch. He's out in front. He's got it. Taylor catches him at the four-yard line. Maybe the three. McCulloch beating Bruce Taylor. He made the tackle at the three-yard line. And the Lions going for the bomb and hitting it. And Taylor shaking up. As he made the tackle, put it at the four-yard line, it'll be first and goal for the Lions, as Landry has been able to hit on those bombs to his speedy receivers. Well, of course, McCulloch, he held the world's record in the high hurdles, University of Southern California Olympics hurdler, and uh, he certainly does have an awful lot of speed. And it's a big job uh, for a defensive back, no matter who he is and how fast he may be, to try and cover him. And what happens when you let an individual like McCulloch get, to, get a little bit close to you, and he gets by you without running with you, running even with you. He's got you beat every time. First and goal from the four. Cotton goes into the tight end. Two tight ends in there. Walton is a wide receiver. Landry's going to pass. Back to pass. Throws. Lays it off to Owens. Incomplete. Phillips over there to protect against Owens. They had a good rush on that time. Well, Wilcox putting pressure on. 
on Landry, so it'll be second down and goal from the four. Boy, this game has really bounced back and forth. Now McCulloch comes in replacing Cotton, so they'll have a couple of wide receivers again in there with second down and goal for the Lions from the four. They have moved from their 20 and moved in a hurry. 49ers lead 24 to 20. But the Lions are back knocking here with second down. Landry has Taylor and Owens behind him on the second down. McCulloch to the near side to give it to Owens to the outside. Grabbed by Wilcox and thrown for a loss at the six-yard line. It'll be third and goal from the six. Wilcox with a good play that time to throw Owens for a loss. Third and goal from the six-yard line. huddling back at the 15. Third down and goal from the six. Now Sanders splits wide to the right. Walton out to the right. Landry straight back to pass. He has time. He looks. He throws over the middle. Incomplete. And Wilcox collides with Owens and a pass interference and Wilcox slams his helmet down. There's pass interference at the goal line as Wilcox and Owens collided, and the Lions have it first and goal at the one. What happened there, Wilcox was covering his territory, coming across with his man. He was looking at Landry to see where he was going to throw the ball. His receiver, the tight end, he just stopped. And then, and of course, Wilcox didn't see it, and he ran right square into him. And, of course, Wilcox is saying, well, I didn't see him stop. I didn't do it intentionally, and that's what he's complaining about. First and goal from the one. Another pass interference penalty against the 49ers has given the Lions the first down to Owens, and he stopped at the one-yard line. Hardman made the tackle on him. Second down and goal from the one. Snydecki goes in to the 49er defense now. He will replace Roosevelt Taylor. Second and goal from a yard out. Second and goal from the one yard line. Landry with Owens and Taylor behind him. Long count by Landry. Quarterback sneak. Did he get it? A penalty flag is dropped. A penalty flag dropped. Let's see against whom this penalty is. I don't know if La Landry, I guess, got in. It's backfield in motion against Backfield in motion against the Lions. Backfield in motion against the Lions. So it will be a five-yard penalty, moving the ball back to the six, where it'll be second and goal from the six. And Roosevelt Taylor goes back in, replacing Snydecki. Two minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The 49ers lead 24 to 20. And the Lions now send McCulloch back in, replacing Cotton. When you're looking for action from your car, fill it up with one of three Chevron Action Age gasolines with F310 at your standard station or Chevron dealer. For the ball at the six, it will be second and goal for the Lions. The last time they had it here, third and goal from the six and pass interference gave them first down on the one. Sanders and Walton out to the near side. McCulloch to the far side. Landry straight back to pass. He throws for Sanders. And it's touchdown, and, uh, and now Phillips is complaining that Sanders knocked him over, which he did. There's no call, and it's a touchdown for the Lions. Touchdown. Phillips and Sanders went up for the ball. Phillips was knocked down. Sanders caught the ball, and it's a touchdown for the Lions, and they have taken the lead. try for the extra point now. 49ers offside. The kick is good anyway, so the uh, Lions will refuse the offside penalty. Look at the scoreboard with 2.38 remaining in the third quarter. The Lions, 27. The 49ers, 24. You know, good service is something the average motorist has come to expect when he pulls into a service station. 
The quality of service Standard Oil has always been proud of just didn't happen by accident. It takes training. For example, every prospective Chevron dealer attends a mandatory three-week sales and management program before his name goes on the door. What this means to you is that the graduates of these training programs start their business with an excellent background in sales and service knowledge as well as management know-how. That means better efficiency at the stations and therefore better service for you. Standard Oil has Chevron dealer training centers located throughout the West. These centers also provide refresher courses and specialized mechanical clinics, in addition to the basic sales and management program. The net result is better trained men, a better brand of service, the kind you've come to expect at Standard Stations and Chevron Dealers. Cunningham and Washington back waiting for this kick with 2.38 remaining in the third quarter. 27 to 24, what a game this is as Mann kicks it deep to Washington. It goes into the end zone and he will not run it out. The 49ers will put it in play at their own 20. So it'll be a first and 10 for San Francisco at its 20 yard line. Trailing by three points, 27 to 24. A tie will not help the 49ers today. They have to win. The Rams have defeated the Steelers, so the 49ers have to win to go into the Eastern or the Western Division Championship. Should the 49ers win, they will play Washington here at Candlestick next Sunday. Brody with first down at the 20. Willard and Vic Washington behind it. He gives to Vic on a sweep. Cuts in, slips at the 21. Slip down at the 21 yard line it will be second down and nine for the 49ers from their 21 second and nine all at 21 second and nine san francisco trailing by three points 27 to 24 boy pass interference penalties have eaten up the 49ers and then one that they figured should have been called against the lions was not and it cost them a touchdown brody back to pass he steps up and throws for willard and he dropped the ball Willard trying to stay inbounds, but again looking up into the sun. The 49ers, there's just one spot over there now with the shadows coming down, and Willard was right in the spot where the sun was in his eyes. I don't know if that bothered him or not, but yeah, it could have. Willard broke out of the shade and into the sun as right there on the edge, and I'm sure it did have some effect, but of course the ball was thrown a little bit to the sideline where for him to stay in bounds, he had to make the diving catch to, and drag his feet uh, in case he did catch the ball, that it would be good and called in bounds. Third down and nine. 49ers have to hit here or give up the ball to the Lions. Brody, long count. John straight back to pass. Has time. Throws over the middle to Vic Washington, and he dropped the ball. Incomplete. He wasn't going to get the first down anyway. And now... Now one of the Lions picks up the ball. Mama picked up the ball and threw it at Forrest Blue. No call on that one. And it will be a fourth down. McCann is going to have to uh, do the punting. This is only the second time that McCann has had to kick. Walton and Barney are the deep men. McCann waiting for the pass from center. The Lions might have a rush on. They got a lot of men up right up on the line of scrimmage now. And now the 49ers move. McCann drops the ball. And the Lions have it. It will be a touchdown for the Lions. There's a penalty flag, and it's against the 49ers for illegal procedure. Maybe it was before the pass from center. Maybe the call is before the... It was. There will be no touchdown. It will be the penalty. So the 49ers are saved by a penalty that time. The 49ers are saved by the penalty as the uh, illegal procedure call came before. The ball was snapped. Now McCann will try again, this time back at his goal line. Good pass from center. Gets a low kick away. Not a very good one, but it may work out all right. It bounds to the 45, down to the 40, bounds to the 35, inside the 35, down to the 31, down to the 30, and rolls dead at the 30-yard line. 
So it will be at first and ten. The 49ers getting a big turnover there. And timeout is taken on the field. You? So of course, there was a situation where McCann was punting from his own goal line and certainly given the opportunity to the Detroit Lions to have good field position uh, late in this third quarter. So now with a good punt, it was not a good punt, but a good darn good roll, uh, rolling to the 30-yard line. Now the uh, Detroit Lions have to go some 70 yards for a touchdown. The Detroit Lions, their great success that they've had this year, has actually been running the ball with Owens, Taylor, and Landry carrying the ball. Owens has 976 yards. He's probably over the 1,000 yards so far now. Uh, and the, he is uh, the first Detroit Lion to ever gain 1,000 yards on that ball club. And Aldi Taylor, uh, he's got 685 yards. And, of course, the unusual situation with Landry, their quarterback, with 505 yards going into this ball game. They have not had the greatest success in their passing game, but when they've had the success, it's been third down and long yard situation with Landry and McCulloch and uh, Aldi Taylor and Owens. Owens and Aldi Taylor is uh, Owens is number one receiver. Aldi Taylor is number three receiver. First and ten for the Lions at their 30. Walton to the near side, McCulloch to the far side. I formation. They gave us to Owens. Owens goes for about three yards. Lions just crowding the 49ers out of there. He might have even more than that. He does. He's up to about the 34 for a four-yard gain. Second down and six. Four-yard pickup for the Lions. The 49ers are going to have to stop the Lions now. They have been unable to stop them. A variety of reasons. They have been able to be tough in close to the goal line, but then a couple of penalties took away their goal line defenses. And uh, now they're going to have to try to stop him up here to get some field position, trailing by three points. Landry on an end around. This time the McCulloch. They've got a defense. A good play by Tommy Hart. Throws him back at the 28-yard line. Tommy Hart with a good play on that end around to McCulloch. And McCulloch tried to cut back inside of him, but Hart made a leap for him and threw him back at the 27. Third down now and 13. Now the 49er pass defense has to be able to do it. 30 seconds, the clock running in this third quarter. 27 to 24, the Lions lead. Landry sends McCulloch and Walton out to the far side. On third and 13. Back to pass Landry. He looks, he throws for Sanders. He's got it short of the first down at the 39-yard line, I believe. It'll be short of the first down, just short of the 40 as the gun sounds, ending the third quarter. A look at the scoreboard shows the Lions 27, the 49ers 24. Chevrolet wants your new wagon to be the best wagon you ever owned. So from now through December 31st, you can get a handy luggage rack at no charge. It's yours when you buy or order any of the big, luxurious 1972 Chevrolet wagons or mid-sized Chevelle wagons with a radio, soft rate tinted glass, white striped tires, and remote control mirror, plus a power tailgate on the Chevrolet wagons or a power tailgate window on Chevelle two-seat wagons features you'd probably want anyway. Just buy or order one of these specially equipped wagons and you get the luggage rack at no charge. As we guessed, the Lions will go for it. They have nothing to lose. They are just uh, about the width of the yardage stripe away from a first down. They have nothing at all to lose in this game. And so they will go for it on fourth down. Pretty tough to stop a powerful running ball club like the Lions with just a matter of inches. Now the Lions go back into the huddle as they start to come up to the football and the officials send them back into the huddle. We start the fourth quarter. The 49ers trail by three. This is the final quarter for the 49ers if they do not beat the Lions today. If they beat the Lions, if they come from behind in this fourth period, then they will go into the game against the Washington Redskins right here at Candlestick next Sunday. 
Fourth down and just a matter of inches for the Lions at their own 40. Time back in. It's interesting to think about what type of play would they run. The quarterback uh, option play down the line, that's a good shot. The quarterback sneak, which Landry almost broke loose and uh, picked up some good yards earlier in the ball game. Fourth down. 49ers in tight. Landry, hey, I don't think he made it. I don't know if he made it or not. It'll depend on how much they give him. I don't know if he made it or not. It's going to be very close. Let's see where one official is standing. Oh, yeah. If, well, wait a minute now. I don't know. If it's across that line, they made it. They did, they did not make it. They didn't make it. The 49ers take over. The 49ers now have the ball at the Lions 40. First and 10. The offense ought to be red hot here in this spot. 49ers up to the line of scrimmage. Witcher flanked to the near side. That offense ready to go. Washington split left. Brody on first down from the 40. John gives to Schreiber. Schreiber cuts in, goes to the 35-yard line. Driver to the 35, gaining five. Walker made the tackle along with Larry Hamm. We'll pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. The world's greatest radio station in the world's greatest city. That's KSFO in San Francisco. We not only have 49er football, we guarantee to have something for everybody. Why not try Jim Lang and the Morning Gang, 6 to 10 a.m., and get yours. Second and five from the 35 of the Lions. Brody may be changing the call at the line of scrimmage. As Washington is split left. Witcher flanked to the right. 49ers trail by three. Long caught by Brody. Gives to Schreiber. Tries to get the outside. Slips and falls as he gets a yard or so. And it's wet over there as he tried to cut back in. His feet slipped out from under him. He gains just a yard. At the 34, it will be third down. For San Francisco and four yards to go. 49ers trying to move here. They got a break when they stop the Lions on that fourth down try at the 40. Now they have to pick up the yardage. 13-30 remaining in the fourth quarter. The 49ers trailing 27 to 24. Witcher comes out to the near side. Washington goes to the left. Schreiber and Vic Washington behind Brody on this third and four. Brody back to pass. Straight back. Has time. Looks. Throws over the middle. He completes it to Schreiber. Schreiber's up in it at the 24. It's a first down. Schreiber held on to that ball even though Wayne Walker almost broke him in two. It's a first and ten. For a back swinging around in a clutch play like this, if Schreiber was lined up in the right halfback position, he swung tightly around what we call a circle pattern from the backfield. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of pressure on a back. Third down situation, you know they need the first down. But boy, you're right there where everybody can take a shot at you. And you really have to concentrate on the ball. And this is what Larry Schreiber has been able to do all year. Every time he's been in the ball game, he's come up with that big play, and he's done a great, great job. The officials telling Joe Schmidt now and the rest of the uh, Lion coaching staff that they have to stay within the restraining line, that they're too far downfield. Jim David is down there, former 49er coach. First and 10 at the 24. Brody has Vic Washington and Schreiber behind him on this first down from the Lions 24. A give to Schreiber. He crowds down to almost the 20-yard line. He will be close to the 20, a gain of uh, about four. It's just short of the 20, so give him about three and a half. San Francisco trailing by three, 27 to 24. 12 minutes and 10 seconds. Remaining in this game, 49ers right in the center of the field at the 20-yard line. Witcher comes out wide to the near side with Barney to cover him. Gene Washington to the left, Clark covering him on second and a little over six. Brody fakes to Schreiber, back to pass, throws it to Qualic. Qualic is hit and stopped at about the 17. Schreiber was trying to get out. He was knocked off his feet. And uh, Rasmussen made the tackle on Qualic at the 17. So it will be third and three. It was a running play fake, and Brody made a very, very nice fake. Two 
driver going into the line. The fake was so good that Lucci came right up and made the tackle on Schreiber so he couldn't get through, therefore leaving the pass pattern open. And uh, actually, it appeared on that play, though I was watching the interior line. It looked like Washington was open in the secondary over the middle. Third down and three. The 49ers at the 17 of the Lions. Witcher to the near side, Gene Washington to the far side. The Lions of 49ers move. Vic Washington hit behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see. It will be, I don't know if it's offside Detroit or illegal procedure against the 49ers. Offside Detroit. Detroit was offside. The 49ers moved after Detroit did. And Detroit bounced offside. That'll give San Francisco a first down. Penalties are playing a part in this ball game, I'll say that. That's right, the way this ball game is going, and it's very tight, 24 to 27, the 49ers are threatened. And as we were talking earlier, uh, that uh, Lon, you know, the turnovers and the penalties are going to make the difference in this ball game. So far in this ball game, they're very, very equal in being able to move the ball, and the defense is playing basically the same type of game. So it's going to be the turnover and the penalty is probably going to be the deciding factor in this ball game. First and 10 at the 12-yard line for the 49ers. Brody has Gene Washington to the left, Dick Witcher to the right. Long count by John. He gives to Schreiber. Schreiber has no opening, goes to the 10, still fighting, and gets himself a couple of yards. Schreiber wouldn't quit. Larry Hand, Lucci, and Mitchell had him at the 10-yard line. And uh, also Wayne Walk. The two-yard gain, it's second down and eight for San Francisco. Trailing by three points with 10 minutes, 30 seconds remaining to play in the game. 49ers trying to take it in for six here against a tough line defense, especially down close. Each team has moved the ball offensively today. But it gets tougher when you get down close to the 10-yard line, and that's where the 49ers are now, second and eight. Not that much room for the receivers to maneuver. Brody straight back to pass. Has time. He looks. He throws. And complete and no penalty is called as two men had a hold of Gene Washington in the end zone. It'll be third down. Third down. It will be third down now and eight. And Brody stops to talk to one of the officials as he goes back to the huddle. Third and eight from the ten. So from the 10-yard line, Brody is faced with another third down play. Dick Washington and Larry Schreiber, the backs behind Brody. Dick Witcher out to the near side. John, back to pass he goes. In trouble, gonna run. He's down to the five. Touchdown, in trouble, ran straight up the middle into the end zone for the score. Boy, what an unbelievable game. Ball will be placed at the 10-yard line by Brody. Gossett kicks. Good. A look at the scoreboard. With 10 minutes and 2 seconds remaining, the 49ers 31, the Lions 27. Chevrolet is building you a sportier way to see the USA. 1972 Camaro. Chevrolet knows that some people want to drive a sports car, but need room for more than two. So they build Camaro with seats for four, and the kind of performance you'd expect from a two-seater. They know how to build that kind of handling into a car. They've been building it into Corvette for 19 years, and that experience makes 72 Camaro one very sporty four-seater. The people at Road and Track magazine named Camaro as one of the ten best cars in the world, and it was the only American car on the list. The people at Chevrolet want your new Camaro to be the best car you ever own. Forty-nine 
towards the kickoff. Right now, the way this game has been bouncing back and forth is where the 49ers, if they could get a turnover, could take command. They led at one time. The biggest lead was 17 to 6. The Lions' biggest lead has been by three points. The 49ers now lead by four points, 31 to 27. And what a game it has been. There's a kick to Williams at the two-yard line, up to the five, the 10, to the 15, to the outside. Fuller chasing him, can't get him. He goes to the 30, slips and falls at the 33-yard line, the 34-yard line. Boy, the Lions are coming close to breaking these kick returns. So the Lions are in good position at the 33-yard line. And here we go again. Now the defense talking it over. The defense did the best job of the last time stopping the Lions on a fourth and inches situation. Landry has been able to hit on the bomb today with his speedy receivers, Walton and McCulloch, to the near side. Owens flanked to the far side. Taylor the lone back behind Landry. Landry pitches out to Taylor on a sweep. Goes to the 35. Jammed out of bounds. Upended at the 35-yard line. A two-yard game. Ran it to the short side that time. Second down and eight from the 35. Oh, oh. 49ers leading by four points, 31 to 27. Nine minutes, 30 seconds remaining. The clock stopped as Taylor went out of bounds. Owens flanked to the far side. Taylor the lone back. McCulloch slotted inside Walton to the near side. On second down and eight. Landry, back to pass, straight back he goes, big rush, he's setting up the screen, and Taylor has it at the 35, he's caught at the 40, caught from behind at the 40-yard line. Charlie Kruger was the man who caught up with him, and Nunley helped out, it's short of the first down by about three yards, it's third and three. Third down and three for the Lions, from their own 40. Nine minutes and five seconds, the clock running. 31 to 27, the 49ers lead. Clock continues to run. A four-point lead by the 49ers. You remember this score, 1957, only it was reversed. The Lions 31 and the 49ers 27. Now Taylor, the lone back behind Landry again. Owens to the far side, McCulloch and Walton to the near side. Landry straight back to pass. He's being rushed. He gets away. He may run. He looks again. He's being chased to the sidelines. He is out of bounds at the 40-yard line, short by three yards of the first down. It'll be fourth down for the Lions. 49ers getting good pressure that time and ran him out of bounds at the 40. It will be fourth and three for Detroit. With eight minutes and 33 seconds remaining, the Lions will kick the ball. have a kicking situation. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll kick. Last week, Atlanta ran a fake on the punt and picked up huge yardage. Let's see what happens here. Herman Weaver is back in punt formation. He has kicked once today. Bruce Tater, the lone man back, Fuller playing up short. 49ers not going to take any chances here, I don't believe, on the fake kick. Pass from center. Weaver takes his time. He kicks it away, and it's a beauty. Bruce Taylor looking. Fair catch at the 15. So it'll be first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Timeout on the field. A look at the scoreboard with 8.25 remaining. The 49ers 31, the Lions 27. Tired of squeezing the family, the luggage, and yourself into the old car every trip? Then consider Chevrolet's special station wagon offer. From now until December 31st, you'll receive at no charge a rooftop luggage carrier when you buy or order a big Chevrolet wagon or a Chevelle wagon equipped with a radio, soft ray tinted glass, white striped tires, outside remote control mirror, plus a power tailgate on the Chevrolet wagon or a power tailgate window on the Chevelle two-seat wagon. Well, that's it for a luggage rack at no charge because Chevrolet wants your new wagon to be the best one you ever owned. The 
49ers at their own 15-yard line. First and 10 with 8 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. The 49ers lead by 4 points, 31 to 27. They are 8 minutes and 25 seconds away from the Western Division Championship. Now, the offense to try to move the ball. Brody can't afford to gamble too much. Yet, he wants to keep all of the ball. Let's see if they can grind it out. Willard and Vic Washington, the running backs behind Brody, with Witcher flanked to the right, and Gene Washington split left. On first down from the 15, Brody to Willard. Willard finds a gap, goes across the 20 to the 21. A pickup of six for Willard. He was tackled by Namath and Walker. It is second down and four. Eight minutes and 12 seconds as the clock runs. Detroit Lions, they line up in a 4-3 defense uh, all afternoon. Brody will say a few words in the system of audibling, and then they will move, and sometimes they catch Brody, but here they was not an audible. You could not get out of it, and they ran into the strength of the defense of the Lions. Second down and four from the 21-yard line. A give to Willard. Somebody moved. Uh, it's That's illegal procedure against the 49ers. So it'll be a five-yard penalty against the 49ers. That is a mistake they could not afford. They can't afford to make those mistakes down there. They can't give up the yardage on penalties, and that is one that really hurts. It stops the clock. It is a five-yard penalty. It means that instead of second and four, it is now second and nine. The thing they try to stay away from is having Brody have to put the ball in the air in this spot. And they really had the yardage, too. Uh, they would have picked up the first yard, so the offensive line, uh, Peoples, uh, Banizak, and Blue really opened an area for Ken Willard to run in. Possibly the reason they did is they were about five yards downfield before the ball was snapped on that illegal procedure penalty. Second and nine. Brody to Willard, tries to get a block, gets the outside the 20, to the outside the 25, to the 27 yard line, he has the first down at the 28. Gene Washington gave him a block, Forrest Blue and Beisler. And it's the first down, the clock stops, he went out of bounds with 7.41 remaining, but a big play for the first down. This play was off tackle, was designed to go inside Lynn Rohde, the left offensive tackle. But the defensive end of the Detroit Lions put a lot of pressure and closed it to the inside. Willard was forced to go to the outside. And as Lawrence said, Gene Washington came up with a big block for Willard to be able to pick up the first down. First and 10 at the 28, 741 remaining. A blitz is on. They gave it to Willard. He finds an opening across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Tackled by Norma Fenwager. Going to maybe the 37, and that's where it is. It's short of the first down by a yard. The clock moving with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. It is second down and a yard for the 49ers. They are at their own 32, leading 31 to 27. The clock is walking. It isn't running. Witcher flanks right. Washington split left on second and one. Brody to Willard. He has the first down as he goes across the 40 to the 41. And Forrest Blue and Mike Lucci are involved in an argument now. Larry Schreiber goes in replacing Willard. Willard doesn't want to come out. He says he's all right. Willard is red hot as he comes off the field. He didn't want to come out. Willard wants the ball and wants to run with it. He gets a standing ovation. The ball at the 41 of the 49ers. Six minutes, 20 seconds remaining. 49ers trying to aid up the clock here, leading by four points. Schreiber and Vic Washington behind Brody. Brody has Witcher flanked to the right and Washington split left. Long count by John. John gives off to Schreiber. He breaks the hole. He breaks the tackle. Goes to the 46-yard line for a five-yard gain. He almost really broke that one. And Willard comes in replacing Schreiber now. A gain of about six to the 47-yard line. It will be second down. And no, it's four yards to go. It's six-yard gain. It is second down and four yards to go. We're shifting. They'll probably shift uh, Schreiber and Willard uh, back and forth. They felt that Willard was probably getting a little bit tired, and he was doing such a good job, they couldn't afford to really lose the ball or a mistake by Ken. So they, so 
so they gave him a little four. breather. Excuse me, Lon. That's all right, Hugh. You go right ahead. Second and four, and the Lions are offside. I don't know if the 49ers moved. The Lions jumped offside as Willard carried across midfield, and it's offside against the Lions. It'll give the 49ers a first down. An offside against the Lions will give the 49ers a first down with five minutes and 23 seconds remaining to play. The 49ers will have a first down at the Lions' 48-yard line. First, down. first and 10, San Francisco. Five minutes and 23 seconds. 31 to 27, the 49ers lead. They're grinding it out on the ground. They have to keep that up. They'll run out the clock against the Lions. The Lions have moved the ball today. 49ers cannot afford to give up the ball unless they have a bigger lead than the four points they have now. Brody to Willard. Willard to the 45 to the 44 yard line for a gain of about three. The clock down to five minutes and 10 seconds. I've never seen seconds go by so slow. Five minutes now. I'd hate to have this, hate to have a life sentence and have this clock ticking it off. Four minutes and 49 seconds. Second down and seven. The 49ers at the 44 of the Lions. Brody, long count. John on a sweep to Vic Washington. He needs some blocking. He's to the 41-yard line. They couldn't quite break it. And it will be a third down situation now from the 41. Third down and about three and a half yards, almost four yards to go for the 49ers. That play was not... Four minutes, 20 seconds. That play was not far from uh, really picking up a lot of yards. What John has been doing, he's been banging away off tackle and right up the middle. Forrest Blue and uh, Lucci are having a little few words. And, of course, uh, on straight man-for-man -man blocking, the 49ers are not trapping or pulling uh, on the straight-ahead plays. But it's Forrest Blue's responsibility to get into the middle linebacker, number 53, Lucci. Third down, and uh, almost four yards to go. Big play, 3.55 remaining. Brody, long count. John still counting. John to Willard. He's at the 35. He has the first down at the 34-yard line. Rasmussen made the tackle at the 34. Three minutes and 37 seconds remaining. The clock moving. The 49ers in front by four points. They have a first down at the 34. Schreiber replaces Willard. What they're doing here, and bro, uh, of course, Ken Willard, if you notice in most backfields, he lines up a great deal deeper. He's five yards deep, and this is the reason why. He can move to a direction of a hole and still has time to be able to change his direction and go clear back to the other side. Three minutes, five seconds now. First and ten at the 34. The give to Schreiber. Schreiber gets the yard or two. Tried to cut Schreiber. back and move, but Wayne Walker was there to make the tackle on him. Put the ball at the 33. It's just a yard gain. Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Second down and nine for the 49ers at the 33. 49ers trying to trying to maintain possession. Two minutes, 35 seconds. 49ers long huddle. They got to keep driving here. Brody doesn't want to put it in the air. They have moved it on the ground. From the 15, Brody asking for quiet. Has Witcher flanked to the near side. Washington split left. That's Gene. Give to Vic Washington on a sweep. Trying to get the outside. Cuts in. Goes to the 30. Dives to the 27-yard line. Tackled at the 27. Willard comes back into the 49er lineup. It was Mitchell who made the tackle on him at the 27. It is third down and three again. With two minutes. And the clock has stopped for the two-minute warning. And a look at the scoreboard with two minutes remaining. The 49ers 31, the Lions 27. To those of you who didn't buy our first Vega last year, an announcement. You really haven't missed anything because the second Vega is here. And in most respects, it's just like the 1971 Vega, which should please you because the 71 Vega turned out just fine. Vega is a car that handles with precision because of its low stance, coil spring suspension, 
a car that will stop you with authority because it has, as standard equipment, big 10-inch front disc brakes. A car with comfortable front bucket seats, seats molded with foam, and a car with Chevy's most innovative little engine, one that's a joy on the highway, a miser at gas stations. In fact, all you'll really be missing in your 72 Vega is the fun you would have had driving your 71. But you can change that at your Chevrolet dealers. Vega, the little car that does everything well. Again, Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. The 49ers with another third down. It is third and three. The 49ers will not be going for a field goal. Oh, I don't imagine they will be because a field goal would just give them a seven-point lead. They can't afford it. They've already gotten a field goal beat. If the Lions were to get the ball and kick a field goal, they've got that beat. So they will probably use up their two downs to make the three if they don't make it on this third down. Willard and Vic Washington behind Brody. Third down and three. They give us to Willard. He is close to the first down across the 25 to the 24-yard line. It's going to be very close. The clock is running with a minute and 50 seconds, and now timeout is taken for a measurement. I don't know who wanted the measurement on that, but they stopped the clock. The clock is stopped. It is very close to the 24-yard line. I think they have to go to the 24 for a first down. Brody looking there, and it is short by about a foot and a half. Well, it's about a half yard short of a first down. It'll be fourth down, and the 49ers are going to be going for it with a minute and 49 seconds remaining. Now, the Lions went for a first down on fourth down at their 40-yard line. That set up the 49ers go out in front touchdown. Now, the 49ers with a minute and 49 seconds left, if they can pick up this first down, can just about run out the clock. On their next series of three. Now, the 49ers got that power eye formation with Schreiber, Willard, and Vic Washington behind Brody. Long count by Brody. Brody. To Vic Washington, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage and thrown for a loss as they put a blitz on and the Lions take over at the 28-yard line. So now the Lions have it with a minute and 37 seconds remaining and they call a timeout. They have two timeouts left. Well, they did not call a timeout. They have three timeouts left. Now the defense is going to have to do it. A minute and uh, 25 seconds remaining. Landry, back to pass. He has lots of time. Close over the middle. Intercepted. He's to the 30-yard line. Oh, the intercept. Nunley intercepted it, and he is practically killed by Skip Vanderbunt. Manley intercepts and runs it to the 31 with a minute and 12 seconds left. The 49ers have the ball. But clock is running, they can run it up. First and 10. The 49ers can just stall out the clock. 50 seconds to give to Willard. Willard is hit hard, but the clock continues to move with 45 seconds in. Now time called on the field to stop the clock with 45 seconds left. The Lions ask for a timeout. So the 49ers with 45 seconds left will be the champions of the Western Division again. And what a game this one has been. I don't know if I'd have been that excited about it if the 49ers had lost it. But what a wild ball game. And the offense, let's say this, all year long we have talked about the offense and the fact that it has been the defense that has held up the 49ers, that the offense has not been able to move the ball. Well, you can't say that anymore. They moved it against Atlanta. They have moved it here today, and they made a drive today from their 15-yard line, eating up over six minutes on the clock on that drive, not throwing one pass, just rooting them out, and then on the first play after Detroit did get the ball back, Frank Nunley intercepted. 
And the 49ers will be playing the Washington Redskins here next Saturday, or next Sunday, rather, unless something terrible happens in the final 45 seconds. The Lions took a timeout to stop the clock. The ball at the Lions 29. 45 seconds remaining. 31 to 27, the 49ers lead. Up to the line of scrimmage come the 49ers. Brody himself scored the go-ahead touchdown, running it in from 10 yards out. John gives to Willard. Willard to the 25, to the 24-yard line. The clock is stopped at 39 seconds, as it will be third down now, and uh, three yards to go for a first down. And the Lions ask for a timeout with 39 seconds remaining. Forty ers standing around. Now Brody is with the officials at the football. The Lions have used their second timeout, I believe. I think they have one more left. Forty ers have a third down and three yards to go at the 23 of the Lions. 39 seconds remaining. Hugh McElhenney and Stu Smith. Rich Smalley hustling down to the 49er dressing room where we will, I hope, not have a repeat of last year's post-game show in which Hugh tragically electrocuted himself in the microphone when he dropped the earphones in a pail of water. And we went through the famous Hugh Lon Earl Stew routine. At the 24-yard line of the Lions, third down and three. The 49ers 31, the Lions 27, with 39 seconds remaining. Brody with Vic Washington and Ken Willard behind him. John gives to Willard. Willard drives for the first down. He gets the first down. The 49ers have won him now. With 32 seconds remaining, Willard gets the first down. Well, San Francisco has a first down with 20 seconds. The Lions will not bother to stop the clock now. The countdown to 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's the gun. The 49ers have won the Western Division Championship. The gun sounds ending the game, and a look at the scoreboard shows the 49ers 31, the Lions 27. Well, the 49ers have repeated as Western Division champions, and what a dramatic game, what an exciting ball game out here today as the 49ers, under the direction of John Brody today, who was last year's most valuable player, and John today had one of his greatest days against the Detroit Lions. John not only passed perfectly, called an excellent game, but he ran in the winning touchdown as the 49er offense came alive and just did a spectacular job today. It was mo mainly offense today, and then finally the 49er defense. They stopped the Lions, who tried on a fourth down situation. The Lions had nothing to lose, so they tried a fourth down an inches situation at their 40-yard line. The 49ers stopped them, took the ball away, and Brody eventually scored the touchdown that gave the 49ers a 31-27 to lead. Then, after San Francisco stopped the Lions on their next drive, 49ers went, drove for something like six minutes with the ball before the Lions took it back, and on the first play, Frank Nunley intercepted and the 49ers were able to stall out the clock. We'll have Stu Smith and Hugh McElhenney. Are they down there in the dressing room yet? Uh, we'll have Hugh and Stu down in the dressing room in a moment to be talking to the players. We certainly want to thank all you folks who uh, were with us this year. And we'll remind you that it will be the 49ers and the Washington Redskins uh, next Sunday here at Candlestick. The Redskins, the ones who allowed the 49ers to get into the uh, championship by beating the Rams. 
in that dramatic game Monday night. Uh, are they going to call when they're down there? The 49ers today trailed three to nothing as the Lions intercepted. Lem Barney intercepted a pass to uh, set up a field goal for Detroit. So Detroit went out in front three to nothing. Then the 49ers came back with Dick Witcher catching a touchdown pass from Brody. 49ers were ahead 7-3. The Lions got another field goal to make it 7-6. Then the 49ers got a 39-yard field goal from Bruce Gossett to go out in front 10-6. The 49ers then got another touchdown pass. John Brody hitting to put the 49ers out in front 17 to uh, 17 to 6 as they hit Ken Willard with the touchdown pass. The Lions came back to score a touchdown to make it 17 to 13 as Aldi Taylor ran one in. Then the Lions in the second half scored to go out in front 20 to 17. The 49ers came back on a pass to uh, from uh, Brody to Gene Washington to take the lead once more at 24 to 20 but the Lions came back on a pass to Sanders to get out in front 27 to 24 and then Brody running in from 10 yards with the clincher that gives the 49ers the uh, Western Division Championship. Other scores today the Rams kept their hopes uh, flickering with a 23 to 14 win over the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, their hopes were alive until the 49ers won this one. Miami won the Eastern Division Championship of the American uh, Football Conference as Miami beat Chicago 27 to 10 while uh, Baltimore was losing to New England by a score of 21 to 17. Other scores, the Jets beat Cincinnati 35 to 21, Miami 27, Green Bay 6, uh, San Diego, Houston 49, San Diego 33, Cleveland 20, Washington 13, Philadelphia 41, the Giants 28, Atlanta 24, New Orleans 20, Kansas City 22, and Buffalo 9. We any reports from the dressing room yet? Okay. The, uh, Stu Smith and Hugh McElhinney are in the dressing room, and we're waiting to find out when they're going to be ready to go. Uh, and I think they're all set, so uh, why don't you take it down there, Hugh? We're just about right set, trying to get Coach Nolan. Here we have Coach Nolan, Dick. Congratulations again. Thanks a lot. You it was a great one. That's two in a row. You know, and it's a funny thing I was thinking about at the end of the game. That's uh, just the reverse of the score of our uh, of the game in '57, and it's the same team. We beat them 31-27, and uh, and it was just the reverse of it. This you know this time. So I was really happy to see us do it. You know, it's sort of history coming back, and we took them apart when we had to. Well, it was really a seesaw ball game. I tell you, we had our hearts in our throat uh, both on, and I up uh, in the press box, and we were dying, and we were worried there at the end, too. How did you feel there with the eight minutes to go? You know, you held on to that ball something, some seven total minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, that offense did one hell of a job. Uh, John Brody called a great game, and I mean, as far as Oh, under pressure. I mean, he's a he's a hell of a guy and a guy that really rises to the occasion. And he did it today, and he's done it many times before. And I knew he could do it, and I knew they'd all do it today. Well, Dick, congratulations. We're the fans. You really made them a lot happier. Of course, we only got one more game to go, and then after that, we'll look only to this coming Sunday. And gosh, thanks. Uh, congratulations. Thanks a lot, Hugh. It was a great one. I was Coach Dick Nolan. Uh, Lon uh, Scoopy's trying to round up somebody else. And it's a little bit noisy right here, and I don't know where Scoop is, but I'll tell you one thing, Lon, we're not going to drop the box into uh, a wet towel bucket, I promise you that. <laughs> and if it does happen, I'm not going to choke. <laughs> right. Well, you, uh, it has to be a mad scene down there, and, and interesting, as Dick Nolan pointed out, as we mentioned up here, that that is yeah. the reverse of the score in 1957, and hey, the score that you remember so well. Hey, uh, here's Ken Willard. Uh, congratulations, Ken. Thanks a lot, Hugh. It's just a great feeling. It really is. It's super. Well, you've had a super year, really and truthfully. You've had a lot of ups and downs, the ball clubs with turnover, uh, pass interceptions, and so forth. But you as an individual probably had, I think, and I've been watching you closely all the way, you had your very finest year. You were really super this year. Well, you know, uh, thank you, Hugh. Uh, sometimes I, I, I think that a ball player is going through it, as you know, tends to think certain years are better and certain years aren't. Uh, you know, I can remember when I gained about 500 yards one year and I scored 10 touchdowns. Everybody thought I did wonderful. Uh, I think it just depends on how your team's going, and I think this reemphasizes the fact that 
personal glory is one thing, but team glory makes all the personal glory you need. Well, you made a big drive, and there was eight minutes left on that clock, and you were certainly the big gun in it, and you came out there at one time, and you didn't want to come out, but the coach wanted to give you a little bit of a breather. What did you feel when you started that ball down on your own 15-yard line? What, did Brody say anything? Did any of the players say anything? No, I, I think we just realized what we had to do. Uh, the reason I didn't want to come out, come out, I wasn't tired. I really wasn't. I was getting up slow, walking back slow, and trying to waste as much time as I could. And I don't know, you've been in ball games uh, yourself when the momentum seems to change, and you, anything you do with the football works out. And that's the way I felt I was at that time. And that's why I really didn't want to come out of the ball game, but it worked out well, uh, and we came back and caught on to the football. Frank made a big interception to, to give us a chance to get another first down. So it, just, it was just a super ball game uh, on everybody's part. You? Yes, Lon. Uh, can uh, Ken hear me? Yes, yes Lon. Uh, uh, Ken, you know, the, the offense was much maligned this year. Uh, the defense was getting uh, all the raids. In fact, we were guilty of the same thing early in the year. It looked as though the offense was not the offense we expected it to be. But the last two games, it certainly appears that the offense has been. Well, I think we can see this in the fact of what Dallas does at the end of the year. They get it going, and uh, they've got it going for the last six games. And I hope this is an indication of uh, we're, we're doing the same thing. We really didn't play real good offensive football the first of the year. But, you, you know, as the old Packer teams, when one side is down, uh, the offense is down, the defense has got to play great football. When the defense isn't stopping them, the offense has got to take up the slack. And this is what we did, and thank goodness we got it going at the right time. Ron, just, uh, Ken, really happy for you and congratulations. Thanks a lot, here. Next, we got uh, Larry Schreiber. Uh, Lon, are you, are you talk tuned in there? You're right. You talked right in here. Larry, congratulations on a good year. You started out a little bit slow, but in the exhibition season, uh, there was no question that you were going to make this ball club and contribute a great deal to it. And as the season progressed, you started to play a little bit more and more and more, but there's one thing that was really uh, outstanding, I think. It's very, very difficult. You don't find it in many ball players. You really come through when the tough gets going, and when you when the tough gets going, the going gets tough, and that just seems to be the type of ball player you are. Well, you always got to be ready on the sidelines. Uh, I really don't care if I ever get in there as long as we keep winning these games. Ken's having such a great season, and I think the reason that I, I got to play more in the end of the season because it's such a long season, that Vince is it's bound to catch up with you. It's going to wear you out if, if the time goes by. Well, you know, Ron, I'm standing next to Larry right here, and he's in his bare feet, and I'm in my, uh, you know, I got my shoes on, and it appears that I'm about uh, one or two inches uh, taller than he is. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, I used to get knocked back many, many times when I was carrying the ball, but Larry, this whole season, you have never lost yardage, or when you made contact with an oncoming tackler, you end up making yards, you push them back. Is there anything that you do different than maybe, uh, maybe I did? No, that's what I know of. I just, uh, at the point of uh, impact, I try to tense up and just try to squirm around and not let them get a good shot at me. Well, how, do you, how do you feel after this win? Oh, I feel great. I, it's just the greatest thing that ever happened. Have you, have you thought about the Washington Redskins at all this week? No, I haven't thought about them at all. We have, in fact, I don't think the team even knew who was going to play next week. Now, I think after tonight and tomorrow, we're going to just relax, and Tuesday we'll start thinking about them again. Larry, congratulations, and uh, good luck this coming week. Thank you. We got to... Uh, we got Frank Menley, the guy that came up and uh, really clinched it. You? Uh, yes. Can you wait a little bit? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, go ahead and talk to Frank Nunley, and then after you finish talking to Frank, we're going to have to close out the regular show, and then we'll come back. But talk to Frank as long as you've got him there, and then okay. we'll close out the show after you talk to Frank. All right, Lon. Frank Nunley, you really closed it off of that interception, but by golly, defensively, uh, the defense had a real great year, and the only thing that's really been bugging you is a few penalties at very bad times. There was a couple of pass interference penalties uh, in today's ball game that uh, look very questionable to us, but we don't argue with the officials. How did the defense really feel about going into this ball game, knowing that you had a win? Well, to be truthful with you, we were pretty tight. You know, we knew we had to win. We were high going into the game. Uh, I thought Detroit had an excellent offensive plan against us, and they moved on us pretty good, but we knew what they were going to do when they got down inside. The disappointing thing about it was the fact that they did score a couple of times down inside and that's uh penalties hurt us down in there but um i'm telling you we came up with a heck of an offense today there's no question about it with eight minutes left in the clock the 49ers came in offense to be on their own 15 yard line and took over and started to march that ball how did you feel at that time did you think you were going to get back in the ball game or you're going to have to come up with another big play well i was i thought that somewhere along the line you know playing conservatively like that that, you know, someplace along the line, something's bound to happen, you know, because there's so many chances. But the way our offense was blowing them off the line today, and it, it really gave us a lift going in there with 
with only 59 seconds left in the game, you know, we were pretty confident. You know, we weren't going to let them beat us deep on a touchdown. I guarantee you that. It was a seesaw-type ball game. It looked like you had it pretty good going. You had seven. You had them good 17-6, to six, but then they went ahead of you back and forth. Did it make you a little bit nervous then when the offense didn't really get something on the board when they were uh, moving the ball? Well, you know, you're out there just trying to do the best you can, and uh, they moved on us pretty good, but I'll tell you, well, our offense, that was shades of last year with that offense that we had today, you know, that we just knew that they couldn't stop them. And we knew that if we stopped them somewhere along in that second half that we were going to beat them. And, and uh, Thune was looking down on us on that fourth down play because that started everything going right. Frank Nunley, congratulations, and the big game coming up this week. Don't look past it. Let's just take care of this one coming up against the Washington Redskins. Okay, you, you know, uh, uh, Dick Witcher and I were out hunting at Link Rahaga's uh, place the other day. We better tell Link if he's listening. We're coming back tomorrow. Because good luck anyway. If it'll give you luck, you do it. Okay. Okay, Lon, take her back. Hi, Hugh, and we will be returning to the 49er uh, clubhouse in just a few moments. We want to close out the regular portion of the show and then be back for our press box review. Now, this is Lon Simmons speaking on behalf of Hugh McElhinney, our engineers Lane King, Walt Lee, and Rich Smalley. This sports guest was produced and directed by Stu Smith. May we remind you, the station to which you are tuned will continue to bring you exciting professional football each week throughout the 1971 football season. Check your local newspaper radio log for the exact time. Next week, the San Francisco 49ers meet the Washington Redskins. Now for a final look at our scoreboard, which shows the 49ers 31 and the Detroit Lions 27. Please stay tuned for the 49er Press Box Review, which will follow in a few moments. And with that... We bring to an end another National Football League game, another 49er broadcast. Today's game and all 49er games this season brought to you by your local Metropolitan Life representative. Ask him about the new you and your family analysis. And by Roos Atkins. Wherever you are, there's a Roos Atkins conveniently nearby. Also by the more than 23,000 standard stations and Chevron dealers across the country serving you Chevron gasolines with F310. The Action Age gasoline. And by Chevrolet, a better way to see the USA. This has been another sports presentation of the Golden West Radio Network. Don't get caught with your battery now. How would you like to settle down with your cassette player some evening for a couple of hours of good music, press the button, and nothing comes out? Listen. You better get that baby out of the night and For batteries that last and last and last in cassette players, radios, or cameras, get EverReady Alkaline Energizers. They last so long, work so well, they're America's best-selling alkaline batteries. First, because they last. Don't get caught with your batteries down. You better get EverReady Alkaline Energizers. Ever ready, Alkaline Energizers. Next, it's Press Box Review, a recap of today's game and scores of other games. And then stay tuned for great music, top personalities, and the very latest news on... KSFO in San Francisco. Time now for 49er Press Box Review, brought to you by the company that says never borrow money needlessly, Household Finance and by Air California, serving San Diego, Palm Springs, and Orange County, the best of Southern California. Well, an exciting afternoon, of course. The 49ers have defended their Western Division Championship, and they did it with a brilliant offensive display and clutch defense today against the Detroit Lion Ball Club that was playing for nothing other than pride, as Coach Joe Schmidt had said, and uh, obviously Detroit has quite a bit of pride because they really played brilliantly. The uh, 49ers winning 31-27. to Dick Witcher scoring a touchdown for the 49ers on a pass. And what we're going to do right now, Walt asked Lane if he's ready on that Dick Witcher play. We will uh, replay the touchdown from Brody to Dick Witcher. And uh, here is that play, and then we'll be talking to Dick. 49ers trail 3 to nothing with 5 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The 49ers offensive line, Blue is its center, Peoples and Beisler are the guard, Rody and Banizak the tackles, Qualic the tight end. 
Gene Washington split left with Clark playing right up tight on him. Witcher to the right and Barney playing rather loosely on him. Brody back to pass. Looks, looks, throws for Witcher. He's open. He's got a touchdown 49er. All right, that's the touchdown, Dick Witcher, and Hugh Macklin is standing by to talk to Dick. Hugh? I got Dick right here, and uh, that was a beautiful, beautiful move, and it looked like it was a corner pattern that you were running into the end zone, but you came into the center a heck of a lot deeper, and it was, of course, the way they're playing zone today, it's kind of difficult to pick up, and I know as a receiver, you have to read it on the run. What was the situation on that touchdown? Well... What it had, what had happened, Hugh, is that we had uh, gone a lot to the inside pattern, and the way we had uh, is that Ted would go five yards and out into the flat, and then I would break across the middle, and we'd try to hit me across the middle, and that's the way we hit the first down right there down by the goal line. When we came back down on the end zone, and especially because of Lim, Lim's a good cornerback and everything, and uh, he plays really well and he guesses a lot, and so uh, we gave him the same picture, only I went inside, got Lim to bite, which he bit really hard on the inside pattern because it was the same picture to him. And when I broke out, uh, he was so far out of position because he had guessed. It appeared that you picked up the strong safety that was there, or the weak side safety, I guess it was, and it appeared that you picked him up. Excuse me, it was the strong side safety. It seemed like you came in to pick him up, and he got confused, and he was the one that was trying to chase you in the, in, back when you caught the ball. Right, he was the only one that was close, and the reason he was is his responsibility was to cover Ted in the flat. And we were so close to the uh, end zone, he was actually the only one that really had a chance to get to the ball. Well, Dick, I, I, in a way, and I know as many years that I played ball, it kind of must have been a little bit frustrating for you all year because the ball didn't come your way too often this year. And it was just the way the patterns went and the way you were approaching different ball clubs. Uh, were you affected during the season at all? Were you a little bit frustrated? Yeah, I really was, Hugh. I think it's been uh, the hardest year that I've ever spent as a professional football player and probably as a football player in general. Uh, I, uh, toward the end of the, or middle of the season, I started losing my confidence quite a bit and uh, then started talking to myself, and I think that's the worst thing that a receiver can do because if you can't uh, believe in yourself and run your patterns like you're open every time, then uh, there's no way uh, that you're going to catch a ball, much less uh, get open. Well, there's many more responsibilities to a receiver, not just catching the ball, but blocking, and you did a great job, and I think that's one of the reasons the offensive running attack went as well as it did because you were coming across picking up those uh, the secondary the strong safety that was uh, many times in the wide plays is your responsibility uh you didn't miss them too many times and your scoring must have been very high and also uh, not just pass, uh, receiving the ball but uh, uh clearing out for other receivers to be able to come underneath and catch the ball well i think that that's the thing that really saved me you know i mean as far as the whole year goes because I felt like that I had a responsibility. I, you know, I take pride in my blocking. I've been a blocker all my life, and uh, uh, I enjoy it. And I think that that's the one thing that really saved me, because as long as I was doing uh, a better than average job of blocking, then uh, I felt like that at least I was uh, contributing something to the, the team effort. Well, Dick, congratulations. Uh, Washington Redskins this coming week. We won't look past that. We'll just look to the Washington Redskins, and uh, whether you catch a ball or not, you're one super guy, and it's a really a pleasure for me to know you. Thank you, Hugh. Hugh? Yes, Ron? We'll return to our uh, press box review and the uh, 49er clubhouse in just one minute. Where did the year go? It seems as though you just took down the tree and put the wreath away. Now it's time to get out the lights and ornaments again, to address your cards, start shopping, put the packages in the mail, and make plans for the family reunion. At Household Finance, we can't help you get everything done, but we may help you have the things you need and do the things you need to do to make it a happy holiday. Remember us, Household Finance. <laughs> Household Finance has 1,600 offices throughout the U.S. and Canada to serve you. See your phone book for the one nearest you. A lot of action in the San Francisco 49ers dressing room, as you can expect. There was a lot of action on the field today, a wild 131-27. to Gene Washington is standing by to talk to Hugh McElhinney, so let's listen to uh, the touchdown catch that Washington made as John Brody hits him on this play. Washington left, 
Witcher right. Brody back to pass. Third and six. Looks. Throws for Washington. He's open. He has it. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, a big touchdown play there. A great catch of super pass. And uh, Hugh, what does Gene have to say about that? Well, we'll just ask Gene. What did you have, how did you feel about it? And what type of pattern was it? And what were you running against? Well, <coughs> on the sideline, John had uh, asked me if I thought that I could run an out and up, which is just a downfield about 10 yards and break outside, which is a pattern we run a lot, and then turn up field. So uh, I said, yeah, I think it'll work. So we got out there and lined up, and, and they came into a bump and run defense, which actually is a better defense to run that against than the one we thought they'd be in. So uh, John sort of licked his chops a little bit, and, and I tried not to smile too soon. <laughs> and uh, we ran ahead and ran it, and it worked just perfectly. John, it seems like he's had a little bit of a problem all year. You've broken open on the deep patterns, but he's been underthrowing. And, of course, he's always said, you know, you throw the ball in the area in which you're going to be, and you'll make some miraculous recovery and come back to get the ball. But there's been few times today, or this season that John has underthrown you and uh, has made it difficult. Have you talked about that, or has there been any particular reason why that was happening, or have you picked up a lot of speed? Well, <laughs> I don't think I picked up any more speed, but one thing that we have to contend with playing here at Candlestick is the AstroTurf. Uh, you know, I can get 40 yards downfield on this AstroTurf, whereas on grass I'd only be maybe 35 yards, see? And, and of course, it doesn't make any quicker backing up, so John doesn't get back any quicker, but now when he's ready to throw, all of a sudden his, his uh, receivers are further down the field than, than he expects them to be. And of course, uh, during the week we work out on grass, so we come out here and our timing is a little different. So uh, that's been the main reason of like a lot of times the ball has been underthrown because John's gotten back and, and ready to throw and you know he has to hurry it a little bit because we're already down there. So we just have to uh, you know get used to playing on this stuff. What percentage would you say during the season have you been double teamed, played short and long, and making it very difficult on some of your pass patterns? Well, I would say the, the first part of the season, the first half of the season, I was double covered an awful lot. And what happened was that uh, teams finally started to realize, well, if they double covered me, that uh, Ted, our tight end, was going to catch a lot of balls and, uh, and we could make yards that way. And, th and that's what happened. Ted was uh, leading the league for a long time. So teams had to start mixing it up. They had to roll my side some, and they had to try and uh, cover Ted, too. So later on in the year, uh, I started to get a little more single covers than I had in the beginning. Gene, coming into this ball game, did you think this was going to be your last? Did you, did you think that you were going to be playing the Washington Redskins this coming Sunday? Well, coming into the game, I you know, was confident we'd win. But, of course, about three-quarters of the way through, I wasn't too sure. Uh, we hadn't scored this many points since last year, I think. And uh, when they kept moving the ball and scoring, I, I really got a little worried. And uh, I thought that it might very well be our last game this year. Well, Gene, you're one super athlete, and you're a real credit to the San Francisco 49ers. Congratulations again on the second NFL NFC championship, and just good luck uh, this coming uh, Sunday against the Washington Redskins. Stay healthy and, you know, stay out of the car and stay home. And get out the rest. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Tell him to go home and rest. And don't take your shirt off either, Gene. <laughs> uh, Hugh, I'd like to mention that being as the 49ers have won tickets for next Sunday's NFC Divisional Playoff game at Candlestick can be picked up by current season ticket holders only. That's current season ticket holders only tomorrow. That's Monday and Tuesday at the Cow Palace. Now, tickets will be available for pickup beginning at 8 a.m. tomorrow and Tuesday at the Cow Palace. The windows will remain open each day until 9 p.m. There is no public sale and no tickets will be mailed. All season ticket holders have received a letter from the 49ers outlying procedures for picking up their tickets. So please bring the envelope in which you received the 49er letter for purposes of identification at the window. That's Monday and Tuesday morning. Tickets available for pickup beginning at 8 a.m. at the Cow Palace for current season ticket holders only. All right, Hugh, who do you have for us now? we got Forrest Blue, the anchor man on the offensive line of the San Francisco 49ers, and he's done a great job. But i got to ask him, you know, you and Lucci were kind of having a few words uh, all the way through the game today. Uh, do you have anything particularly against Lucci? Well, uh, no, he's a, a great middle linebacker, and, you know, when you play against the best, well, you know, he gets a little heated in there. He doesn't want to get blocked, and I want to block him. And, uh, you know, he, he was getting a little upset because we were running on him a little bit. So uh, I think this was what was, uh, you know, getting to him a little bit. Last year, the 49ers had a little bit of trouble running the football. 
it was always a fairly good interior line, only mostly it appeared because of exceptional ability of Ken Willard. But this year, you've been able to go outside, up the middle, and that last eight minutes in today's ball game was actually marvelous. Uh, is there any particular thing that you can contrib contribute the success of the running and the fine job the offensive line has done in the running game for the 49ers? Well, I think a lot of it would have to be the acquisition of Vic Washington because, uh, you know, when you have that outside threat, well, they can't just, uh, you know, set up their defenses to stop everything in the middle, and that's what they did to us last year because uh, all of our backs were mostly fullback types and uh, didn't really have the speed to get wide. So with Vic, you know, it, uh, they sort of complement each other that we can hit them inside and, uh, and go wide. But today uh, we took three plays and just ran right at them for eight minutes, and they couldn't stop them. There wasn't anything fancy about that uh, those plays in which you were running. There was no uh, pull in except for the couple of sweeps. But in that interior line, it appeared from the press box that you were just going on head on head and trying to get them in. And it seemed like your main responsibility was Lucci. Well, I uh, I think what we did today was uh, we just you know went right went right at them and uh, you know we realized the importance of the game and uh, everybody gave a little extra effort. The backs and hitting the holes and I think the linemen and you know trying to get hold of blocks a little bit longer and. Uh, I don't know, I think we were just really fired up for the game. Earlier in the first quarter, it appeared that Rush was giving uh, er, uh, Randy Beisler a little bit of trouble. Then I start following back, and I notice on the all-pass patterns, you were favoring to Rush's side and giving Randy a little bit of help. Did you talk this over, or was this a plan, or was I just seeing something that I wasn't seeing? Well, what they were doing, uh, they had a call in there that was sending Rush uh, on stunts, and... Uh, I picked up the call from Lucci, and when you know when I knew he was going to be coming inside or something, well, I'd help Randy, and uh, the other times I'd help Woody if uh, if Lucci was sending the tackles inside. But you know, usually I'm just in there to help out if they're in a you know even man line. And uh, but they uh, they ran a lot of odds today, and they were slanting a guy back to Randy. So he and I probably looked like we were blocking the same guy most of the day. It appeared also during the season that anybody any team that came up against a in an odd defense whether it be to the weak side or the strong side, and you had a man sitting right over your head, that we had great success running the ball, but then they would switch and go into a 4-3, uh, we would have a little bit more pro uh, more problems. Today, that was not the case. Against the 4-3, you people did mostly anything that you wanted to do. Well, I think what uh, people have done to us most of the year is uh, been giving us a lot of different looks, and... Uh, what this does, it, it uh, keeps you from spending a lot of time perfecting plays, and it causes you to make mistakes. And uh, I don't know, I, most teams think if you, if you run an odd line, it's harder to run against. But, you know, speaking from the center standpoint, I'd rather, rather block a 270-pound you know, tackle that's not too fast than a 230-pound linebacker that's real fast. They say... Uh, you? Yes. I'm going to have to interrupt you here. We have to have a station break, and I uh, want to give our congratulations to Forrest Blue. We have to have a station break and a commercial, and we'll be right back to you, fellas. And Forrest, uh, our congratulations, too. We'll return to our press box review in just Thank one you. minute. Thank you. Each winter, many big sun worshippers fly to Palm Springs for a fun-filled vacation of golf, swimming, horseback riding, tennis, and nightlife. And more of them are flying on Air California's Boeing 737 Sun Jets. The reason? Air California is the only airline providing flights to Palm Springs from all three airports, San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose. And you save $2 each way over any competitive service. Two positive benefits for flying Air California to Palm Springs, more service and a real savings in dollars. But there are others. Air California has the best on-time record in the industry, and the service is friendly and efficient. And by the way, if you're traveling to Orange County Disneyland, Ontario, or San Diego, Air California flies there, too. Air California, an aggressive airline, dedicated to good service at a reasonable price. Call Air California or your travel agent. Before going back to the clubhouse and Hugh McElhinney and the 49ers who have won the Western Division Championship today, let's pause for station identification. This is the Golden West Radio Network. <laughs> Well, let's go back now to Hugh McElhinney and the 49er. Uh... Ron, we have, uh, we have Cedric Hardman, uh, two years with the San Francisco 49ers. He's experienced uh, two uh, division titles. And uh, Cedric, uh, how do you feel about today's ball game? Oh, I think we played a pretty good ball game, especially in the second half. Our offense just 
was tremendous, man. You can't say too much about John Brody. He did one hell of a job for us, and uh, we're really proud of him. And uh, next week, we hope the defense can do it. Cedric, in the beginning of the season, boy, I'm telling you, you were getting to that quarterback, you and Tommy Hart, and as the season progressed, it was, seemed like it was you were having more trouble. Was there any particular reason? Were the offensive uh, tackles doing something different with you? I hope to think that they're uh, working hard at trying to stop us because if they're not, this means we're relaxing too much on the job. But uh, as far as rushing, I think we're still uh, going at it 100% and maybe 110%. And I'm trying my best to get there, and I'm sure Tommy is. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, making the right moves. And today, I, there were times when I should have been there, and uh, Landry made a step one way or another, and it just uh, got out of my direct line, and it was throwing me off just a little bit. But all in all, I think uh, we're starting to get our pressure back. And it seems as if it's this time of year when the offenses are really gelling and the defenses are sort of getting contested a little bit more. And uh, we just only hope that next week we can put out a more defensive effort. I've talked to many of the uh, coaching staffs around the country of the teams that we've played this year, and uh, their consensus was that if we run at you a lot, run at Cedric Harbin a lot, we're going to slow up his pass rush. Is this true? Oh, in some cases it is. It depends on your physical well-being, I think. It depends on how tired uh, you get in stopping the run because a lot of times this can not take a lot out of you. But if uh, you're determined, it doesn't bother you that much, and uh, especially if you think your main goal is getting to the passes. So I don't, I don't believe that bothers me too much. A lot of people want to say, run at the pass rushes, and uh, you can stop them or you can get by them. But this is just something that's going around. I don't necessarily go along with it. Do you know who you're going to be playing this coming Sunday? Uh, the Washington. I'll uh, be playing against Jim Snow. <laughs> The Washington Redskins for the first playoff game. Cedric Hardman, congratulations for a great year. I hope I have the opportunity to talk to you next Sunday in the same situation after a big win. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you. Ron, we're getting uh, Vic Washington over now. And he's had just a great year. Lon, we got Vic Washington. He's uh, putting on his trousers. He's afraid he won't catch it, so he won't catch cold. Vic, congratulations on a great, great year. You've certainly contributed to the running game of this ball club, uh, the passing game, and uh, I, it appears just total spirit because you're a real gutty, tremendous guy, and uh, you certainly spark the fans when you get your hands in the ball. How did you? How do you feel? Uh, after this particular ball game? Well, Hugh, I, I feel great. I, I knew that uh, we could do it all the time. It's just a matter of uh, getting it all together and, and making everybody else believe that we could do it. You know, we had the potential of a great scoring machine, and uh, and everyone was trying to figure out why we couldn't score, and they had us thinking about why we couldn't score. And I think uh, before last week's game, we went home and did a lot of soul searching. It's just a little extra thing, you know, like getting downfield and throwing extra blocks and not standing around, you know. And uh, I think everyone realized what we could do, and they just went out and did it. It's been a long season, and you still got another ball game to go. But in the first part of the season, not just you, but the whole offensive ball club had a terrible time trying to hold on to the ball. It seemed like in the first five ball games, uh, those fumbles really hurt the ball club. Was there anything partic any particular reason why the backs were losing the ball? No, not really, because uh, you constantly think about this. Like, I, I've lost the ball quite a few times, and uh, it, it plays on my mind, but I can't uh, slow down on my game, any, and I can't let it bother me. So uh, I, 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 when I get the ball, I make sure that I get it down and then and, and squeeze it when I get it and, uh, and just try to pick my holes, and, and when I get a chance, I'll, I'll cut. But I make sure down that when I turn up, I hold on to the ball and, and put my head down and cover it up with both hands now. And, then, and I think this, everyone has, has thought about it quite a bit. Well, you played four years of Canadian football and three, three years of Canadian football, and now you're playing with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, have you noticed any great difference? Are you happier here than you were in Canada? Is this where you want to stay? Well, I'm, I'm from the United States. For one thing, I always wanted to come back. And if there's any team I, I wanted to be with was the 49ers, and I was very happy that they drafted me. And the next thing, I, I want an opportunity to be a running back in my heart. But they always said that was too small and, and I couldn't block. And But I wanted a chance, and they gave me a chance to do my thing. And I'm very happy for that. And I wouldn't want to be uh, with anyone else. There's a great bunch of fellows here. Rick, congratulations on a great year. You've really, you've really contributed to this ball club. And uh, believe me, from an old-timer and watching, that, uh, watching the ball club uh, for, for so many years, uh, I can honestly say uh, you're the best 
doggone runner we've had in a long time, and you're a real threat any time you walk out on the field. And congratulations after today's victory. And next week, who are you playing next week? You're playing the uh, Washington Redskins, you know. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. When is that? I, I really don't know. I can tell you. <laughs> congratulations, Vic. Congratulations. Ron, do you want to catch a commercial? Yes, you will do that while you're looking for some of the other fellows, and we'll return to our press box review in just one minute. No matter how involved we are in our day-to-day -day routines, when the holidays come, they sweep us along with them. We catch ourselves daydreaming a little more than usual about holidays gone by and the people we shared them with. We take time planning to make this the best holiday ever. At Household Finance, we know there's a practical side to your holiday planning. And we just want to remind you that if you need help making your plans come true, there's an HFC office nearby. Household Finance has 1,600 offices throughout the U.S. and Canada to serve you. See your phone book for the one nearest you. Today at Candlestick Park, the San Francisco 49ers won the Western Division Championship. Last year's most valuable player in the National Football League was quarterback John Brody. John, this year, did not have the statistical year that he had last year. By that, I mean he had some interceptions this year, certain turnovers. The offense was not moving. All of a sudden, John Brody said there was nothing wrong. He wasn't doing anything different. The defenses were keying a bit differently. They, were, they had to be given credit for something. But last week against Atlanta, Brody ran the ball club to perfection. Today, you heard uh, Coach Dick Nolan talk about the excellent job that Brody did against Detroit. And one of the uh, things that he did was run for the winning touchdown. And let's listen to that play. John, back to pass he goes. In trouble, going to run. He's down to the first. Touchdown, John Brody running for the touchdown that wins for the 49ers today. Besides that, Brody came back to direct an attack that held onto the ball for something over six minutes that uh, allowed the 49ers to keep that lead. John is with Hugh McElhinney now. Hugh? John, on that particular touchdown run, the last one that really iced the ball game, it didn't ice it at the time, but to really put you out in front, uh, you had a pass pattern called. I don't think it was a broken pattern. It was just good coverage. And uh, what was your thinking when, uh, when you couldn't find anybody to throw the ball? Well, Mac, as you know, about the only kind of balls I can run in are the gimmies. And uh, it, they, they defensed the play to where they took our pattern away. And uh, I look back to Gene, who was supposed to be open uh, in that particular defense, except Wayne Walker had take, thrown way back in the end zone with, uh, with Vic Washington, who was on an out pattern. And, it, you know, by that time, all these thoughts uh, get a little messed up, and there wasn't much else to do. And so I just uh, took about 20 seconds off the clock and ran six yards quarterback takes so much of the blunt of losing and of course they get much of the praise for winning and uh, this year there's been many problems uh, interceptions fumbles uh, pass interceptions and so forth and probably that was the biggest difference of this year and last year but it seemed like offensively the ball had, the offensive off club had no consistency now that you've won the conference is there anything that you think that is different that caused the difficulty earlier in the year? Well, Mac, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to disagree with you because I think the last four weeks we've played outstandingly offensively. And, uh, and I think that uh, early in the year we did have a little trouble adjusting to ourselves, and I don't think we all knew what we did best. I think Washington's a great running back, and you have to have him in there. And I don't think I utilized him as well as I might have in certain situations. But uh, I think we're all starting to get together and, uh, and uh, do what we do best and uh, help each other out there. Uh, you know, there's, there aren't that many secrets in this game. Uh, I, I just think that uh, it's starting to come at a pretty good time. In the Los Angeles game, the last ball game, you threw the ball 13 times, you completed five. Nobody talked about the four balls that were dropped. It was right in the old right in the old bread basket and nobody can uh, you know that's the only thing a quarterback can do uh, is put the ball where the guy can catch it how do you feel when you see the ball dropped as often it was this year and it's never been anything written about that but we've been kind of watching it and you've been right on target you've hit the ball right in there your percentage would be fantastically high how do you feel when the ball is dropped well mac i tell you what i feel 
I feel that uh, if I have any concern about uh, a ball being dropped, uh, I guess I have to give them uh, some privilege to have a concern when I overthrow it. And I don't think that relates to trying to win. So uh, there are reasons for drop balls. I'm more concerned with was it how to get open because I'm not. I don't. Con if you if you say uh, the guy drops the ball so don't throw it to him, you got nowhere to go. Uh, so we just. I don't. I don't really concern myself with any of that type of thinking and. And we got good people catching the ball, and I know if I can get it to them enough, they're going to hold it. John, you're noted as a fellow who doesn't really show that much emotion about things, but I believe I saw a display of emotion when uh, you picked up that first down uh, that meant that you were going to be able to run out the clock. And that. It looked like John Brody was a little bit emotional at that point. Well, I think we all have emotions. I, I just don't think they relate to playing quarterback uh, during a ball game. I, I, I think there's enough things going on that you have to concentrate on in order to operate. And uh, what am I going to do? I'm not much of an inspiration. Uh, what am I going to do? Say hit him again harder? Uh, you know, we go out there and just play. And uh, I feel the better I can, I can realize what's going on out there, uh, the better I can give them an opportunity to do what they can do also. John, you were named most valuable player last year. Uh, your team won the championship last year. It won the championship again this year. Do you think you were a better player last year, a better player this year? Do you think it has been the same type of year? How do you rate yourself as compared to last year when you were supposed to be the best player in football? Well, I don't think I played quite as well early in the year. Uh, but other than that, I wouldn't, re I wouldn't relate to rating myself. Our club is playing better now than they did last year uh, offensively, and they have been for the last month. But we got an awful lot of good things happen to us last year, and it, it, it makes sense to me that last year when you have 17 turnovers and you win a division, uh, things are going your way. This year I think we were minus 10 or 11, and we still won it. So I think it, it's a little more meaningful to your ability uh, when you can beat adversity. John, there was a situation with eight minutes to go on the clock, right in the, near the end of the ball game. You had the ball on the 15-yard line, and the players were in a the huddle. There was a timeout. You were standing about four yards out by yourself, your hands on your hips, just kind of looking downfield. What goes through John Brody's mind in a situation like this? When you're out in front, you got eight minutes to go in the ball game. What is going through your mind? Well, uh, it varies depending on the situation. At that time, I didn't need to get in the huddle because... Uh, <laughs> they were all jiving each other up, and uh, that wasn't going to help me any. So I just kind of hung out there and thought of a play and called it. But John Brody, congratulations on a, another conference win, and Washington Redskins this coming Sunday. I hope I have the opportunity next Sunday to stand here and chat with you again. Thanks, Mac. I guess you remember the score. 31-27. <laughs> Thank you. Who's favorite? I don't know, it was a different team than 15 years ago. <laughs> John Brody, the really, truly old pro guy. Ron, I think that winds it up here. Have you got anything else you want to cover? No, I just want to say congratulations to you, Hugh, for not dropping your earphones oh. in the uh, ice bucket again. I tell you, I tell you, this time they're organized. This was a snap, very easy. And I tell you, it was a great year, Lon. Uh, I guess we'll be working next Sunday. I hope we got another couple of weeks to go. And uh, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. And... Uh, We'll be talking to you next Sunday. Very good, you. And Scoopy says Merry Christmas too, Ron. Oh, yeah? When did he start that? Oh, humbug. Humbug. All guests interviewed. Re All our guests interviewed received blue chip stamps. The blue chip stamp book can turn into a camping uh, knife or a canteen or a flashlight or a softball or a pen set or a watercolor set or sunglasses, and that's just the beginning. Blue chip stamps. You'll find them at all Mayfair markets. Uh, just a quick look at statistics in today's game. The 49ers had 357 total yards to 310 for the Lions. The 49ers made 171 rushing and 186 passing. John Brody today uh, on his passing. I've got it here someplace if I can find it. He had 14 out of 20 for 186 yards. Landry was 9 for 18 for 176. Ken Willard gained 81 yards. He was the leading rusher today. And uh, Shriver had 42. Vic Washington had 38. John Brody had 10, an important 10. It was a touchdown that uh, won it for the 49ers. Gene Washington, Dick Witcher, Ted Qualick, and Ken Willard each caught three passes. And uh, the 49ers win 31-27. to Reminder that tickets for next Sunday's National Football Conference Divisional Playoff Game at Candlestick Park can be picked up by current season ticket holders only. That's current season ticket holders only tomorrow and Tuesday mornings at the Cow Palace. 
Tickets will be available for pickup beginning at 8 a.m. tomorrow and Tuesday at the Cow Palace. The windows will remain open each day until 9 p.m. There will be no public sale and no tickets will be mailed. All season ticket holders have received a letter from the 49ers outlining procedures for picking up their tickets. Please bring the envelope in which you received the 49er letter for purposes of identification at the window. That's tickets for Sunday's NFC Divisional Playoff Game at Candlestick Park. They can be picked up by current season ticket holders only tomorrow and Tuesday at the Cow Palace from 8 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. at night. Final score, the 49ers win the Western Division Championship for the second consecutive year, 31-27, reversing a 1957 loss to the Detroit Lions that knocked the 49ers out of the championship. It will be Billy Kilmer and the Washington Redskins next Sunday, and we'll be on the air with the broadcast of that one starting at 12.40. And that's our 49er Press Box Review for today. 49er Press Box Review was brought to you by Household Finance a good place to borrow, and by Air California with group fares and charter service to major games around the state.